All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of The Masochist. Uh, big shout out to Simo and Osman for inventing the series. But first, would you like to make your Master Duel experience a whole lot better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your deck so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, so we're, we are back. I am so excited to be back. Uh, we have a lot going on here. I made a new deck. This one might may surprise you. This one may surprise you. It's a very interesting version of the deck. Uh, we are playing, I, like I said, I am willing to play new stuff every single time that we play because the reality is the card combination that we have right now is not good enough to get us into... Uh, it's just not good enough to get us into diamond or, or master one so i'm willing to try new things every single time and i don't really care uh so today i have a totally new deck i put a bunch of normal monsters in i put a bunch of normal working cards in and our deck today is basically time thief redo or turbo plus the plus the barrier statue the reality is those are our best two like cards in our entire deck it's we have three cards that are really good we have bear statue bear statue number two small world um vijam of course and then we've also got there can only be one and we've got time thief redoer those are all of those cards are probably going to be with us to the very very end and you can throw a crackdown in there so i built a whole deck around that exact concept we have a bunch of level four monsters um that'll basically work for us and then we've got these ninjas now this one basically not this ninja the other ninja this lets you discard a trap special summon another ninja they're level four we can go into the time thief we have all of these normal monsters right here this will help us summon time thief a lot more easily uh because we have a bunch of cards that work with normal monsters now uh so that'll be good plus we can cut down the extra deck we can cut a lot of the junk out of the extra deck which is also kind of cool um and then on top of that like i said i cut out phantasme i just i never successfully resolved them ever I would draw him in games where we were playing against Synchro decks, and then when we played against Link deck, he'd be nowhere to be found. And then also, interestingly enough, and this is kind of stupid or crazy, I don't know, but I'm playing Paladin of Storm Dragon because we did pull the High Ritual Art, which is interesting because if High Ritual Art plus any normal monster is essentially this, ready to go. And then we've also got the Signet Ritual, so if we draw these two together, we can summon. I might cut the Signet Ritual eventually. This is basically like a brick in our deck, so it, it's kind of fine. As long as we don't draw it, we're good, but we have the High Ritual Art. Any normal monster plus High Ritual Art will get us the Paladin. It's a free level 4 summon. So we've got this as a free level 4 summoner. We have this as a free level 4 summon. Uh, we have Fustian uh, Bargain, which lets you target a special summon monster, send it to the graveyard special summon a level four lower normal monster from the hand which is any of these so that'll work with the normal monsters we have just a ton of synergy then we have some free special summons like at emancipator and then this card penguin squire i was dumb last video i thought he lowered the level of the monster that he was summoning but my initial thought was correct which is that he lowers his own level not the level of the monster that uh, that is being flipped up so that is pretty good so we can definitely use this card and then our changed our extra deck i cut all of the fat out of our extra deck we basically are playing a bunch of links and a bunch of rank fours and nothing else because there's no point to play everything else because we're not going to be using everything else and we've got a handful of synchros i've been testing this and it's actually been quite fun uh so like i said we'll see how it goes today i'm, I'm, I'm if there's any changes you want me to make literally i'm going to try it because i'm going to keep trying different combinations until we have like the funnest deck possible and um, I'm, I'm very excited to play today by the way guys we are in uh gold one i i don't announce like the, the every time like what rank we're in uh we've already been to platinum so we're really just climbing back up so i don't really uh feel the need to like tell tell you guys unless i rank up all right so i just i just loaded in and um i actually forgot to switch decks but our opponent insta scooped as soon as we got here so they chose for them to go first uh we just loaded in and uh yeah i forgot to change decks but they scooped it automatically so i guess we get a free pack i i don't even know what to say there 
All right, so we've got two legacy tickets and some and some gems. Out of curiosity, this is this is what our opponent was is playing. It, it doesn't look like a terrible deck, honestly. It looks very competent, actually. It's a 60 card uh, Dragoonity deck. All right, let's get into the shop. We've got one master pack to open. It seems to be shining. Pretty cool. I can't wait to see what we get. So right off the bat, we've got a Burning Abyss monster, but they do blow themselves up if you've got other cards. So we can special summon it, but then it has Burning Abyss energy. But this is um, this isn't one of the ones that we can use right away. Uh, Cleant, we have had some cool normal. We have we've had some cool. Uh, we're going in sort of a cybers direction. We're going in so many different directions. Tough to really say. Uh, this card's actually not even bad. It makes all Cybers monsters gain 500 attack. And then on top of that, if it's destroyed, you can destroy Cybers in the hand or field. It's not a bad card, but it's only its, it's level's not the best for us. Uh, we've got the boot up, which we don't have any gadgets, unfortunately. But if we had gadgets, I think this could be cool. Next, we've got Mystic Shine Ball. If we get a Venus, that could fire off for us. Dark Renewal's not a bad card. Um... Yeah, we don't have a spellcaster monster that I think can work for us, or a dark spellcaster monster. Uh, but, I mean, that's kind of cool, right? Your opponent, normal summons or special summons a monster. Target one of those monsters, one spellcaster. Send both to the graveyard. Special summon a dark spellcaster. It, it, this is a card that can be used in Dark Magician or Altergeist, but I don't think it's usable for us, unfortunately. Uh, this is our Hollow. We got Vendred Chimera. That is a really random card. We don't have a Vendred spell that I know of. And just... And overall, I don't think I'm going to be able to use that. Battery Man D. We have some other Battery Men, but they're not good enough. And then, what is this? Stago Cyber. Oh, uh, this card's actually not a terrible card. And uh, we can actually summon this out with... This has really crap stats, though. We can actually summon this card out with... with we have um, the Double Evolution Pill. I, I believe that's what it's called. We, we have Double Evolution Pill that can summon this out. And then on top of that, we can play this in our Chaos deck. Because its graveyard effect really isn't actually that bad. So my problem with this card is that the stats on this is garbage. Why is that attack so low and that defense so high? Like, it's terrible. Uh, but other than that, it's like maybe goes in our Chaos deck. Overall, I don't think anything here is really playable at the moment. But, you know, with a few more pulls of different stuff, I think it could be usable. All right, now we're going to open these Legacy tickets. Uh, it's fine that, that those packs kind of that pack kind of sucked. Because the truth is, we didn't really earn it anyway. Uh, we just kind of loaded in. The guy just scooped automatically. I don't really even know what to say about that. Uh, that is not usable right now. Final gesture is... Uh, this card is a little too specific. And it requires a level 3 monster with the same name. So it's just far too specific for us to use. And hopefully the next cards we get are not that specific. That is not usable. And Flame Spirit Ignis... This, if we ever build that fire deck, this is definitely going in that fire deck. This is not a bad card, actually. Tribute of Fire, inflict 100 for each fire. That's 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 not bad. That really isn't bad. If like if we go in a fire direction, that's not bad. It's another burn card for us. It's really not a bad burn card either. All right, so I'm actually excited. This is our real first game here. Uh, our hand is not looking too bad. We have high ritual art, but we didn't draw any of our normal monsters. If we had drawn one of our normal monsters, this would have been uh, we would have been able to summon the paladin of storm dragons out but we did not uh we have this dude which i can discard this and then special summon out time thief redoer so what do you like this is this is, we actually have some decent options so we can summon this and then basically get discard this and get time thief redoer into play but if our opponent ashes us we essentially lose or we have the slow play which is normal summon the barrier statue and then synchro zone hoping our opponent doesn't have a synchro deck which let's be honest this is definitely the this is definitely the smarter play to do. Synchro Zone plus plus Barrier Statue. I mean, come on. It's just... It, it is absolutely the better play. Um, the other play, like I said, if they have Ash, we just lose. If they have Maxi, we make them draw. And we can't really afford to make them draw. Not with our deck, anyway. Alright, so our opponent's playing Sword Soul. So, <laughs> the Synchro Zone is totally useless. Which is... Well, actually, not totally useless. Because technically speaking, they can't Special Summon. So... It's not totally useless. So if they can't special summon, they can get like Taya and Moe and all that stuff, but they can't, uh, as long as they can't get over the barrier statue, but okay, so never mind. It is literally useless. So now Synchro Zone is just completely useless, and I think we just lose the duel here. Oh yeah, this guy's got Long One, he's got everything. He's, um, this duel is lost. Uh, that sucks. I mean, the barrier statue play would, uh, was technically the right play. 
I don't know what it is with our luck lately, but like every single time they're playing a link deck, no Phantasmate. Every single time they're playing a, uh, every time we draw the synchro zone, they're playing a synchro deck. It's like incredible. All right, we just, again, we didn't draw, we did not draw the, the pro appropriate card. Okay, but we have the way to get the Time Thief. So as long as they don't have Ash, we can get the Time Thief Redoer. So let's try that. We're going to discard this snake right here, and then we're going to try. Hopefully it doesn't Ash us. Unfortunately, Gamma. Wow, okay. Now, unfortunately, we've got two bricks in our hands. I might cut the Sign at Ritual. That's what I might cut. I think I'm going to cut the Sign at Ritual. It's a little dumb to have Sign at Ritual, because uh, the reality is most of the time that card's not going to actually work for us so i'm probably going to cut it right after this now that i thought about it a little bit like i like i like it because i like the second effect because if we have a ritual we can banish this if we have a ritual monster yeah we can banish from the graveyard and one this and a ritual monster from the graveyard and the special summon two tokens i think that effect's pretty good but i don't think it's good enough did it? he just pass okay he just passed uh we drew a rocket rocket caliber which is not the right card but it's fine so we're going to normal summon and just Go to battle and attack. Yeah, sign it ritual I'm probably going to cut. We're, we're still not in a terrible board state. I don't know what he's playing. Okay, now I know what he's playing. Uh, I'm going to activate, not on my end phase, but on his uh, draw phase, I'm going to activate this. Because uh, I want to get rid... I don't, I don't want him to go into Egyptian God Slime, because then we just lose. I'm going to just do that. And he can't Lightning Storm us, because obviously he's got a field. We play against Winged Dragon of Raw very regular it's been like almost every week we play wing dragon of raw which this is not a matchup that i'm like i'm not complaining at all this is a matchup i like so right now he's kind of stuck this is not bad actually i can get over his monster but truthfully i really don't want to uh but i mean technically actually yeah i'm gonna i can activate high ritual art and then bounce this back to his hand but then it's dumb he can just activate it again so he can summon it back out i can use time thief and, and start i could sit on a time thief right now and just start accumulating resources that's what else i can do so i think the best play right now would be to summon this and then go into time thief actually we have multiple things we can go into too funny enough we can actually go into our entire look how glowed up this is right look look at this crazy um yeah but we can go into this which is kind of cool but not going to help too much right now we can go into time thief we can go into sue ship we can go into this and search another normal monster and then we can uh use high ritual art in order to summon it which is like kind of cool actually uh but just not at this moment we can go into this like it's kind of cool to have your entire extra deck actually usable so we're going to go into time thief and i think i'm just going to sit on the time thief because uh a lot of the cards in his extra deck right now are actually yeah, we're going to sit on the Time Thief. I, I think a lot of the cards in his extra deck are Aqua, like Aqua level 10. And same thing goes for his main deck. Like he has a lot of Aqua level, like Aqua monsters in his deck. It's Aqua and Divine. So I mean, I don't want to stay on more than one monster because I want to be on one monster. So he can't just activate that card to tribute three monsters on the field. And if he does activate that, I want to be able to do something about it. That's that's interesting. Illusion of Chaos. Our opponent's going to activate Fallen Paradise. This is really odd. So he's got Sacred Beast, Dark Magician, and Gods all in one deck. Now he normal summons an Ash. I don't know where this is going, but I guess we'll see in a second. All right, he's going to link, link to into Pentastag, which gives piercing to monsters. But I, at least he, I guess he can search now. But he's not going to search. He's going to go to the end phase. Fine with me. Uh, if we can get a trap, that would be fantastic. I need to draw a monster. I need to draw a monster. Uh, we're going to attach something. No, we didn't get a monster. We got Raviel, which I would have rather him have drawn Raviel because that's essentially a brick right now. Oh, I'm just missed. All right, let's uh, attack this Pentastag. All right, Pentastag is gone. Set the Threatening Roar and just pass here. It could be good too because if he has one Pentastag, I mean, if he has one Raviel, that might have been good that we took the Raviel. Uh, of course, we're going to keep attaching. If we had Zeus, oh my. You imagine if we had Zeus, a spell. Perfect, that's awesome. I might do the spell effect during my turn. That's not good. That's definitely not good. But we have, we have at least attack protection protection for one turn you're gonna search Haman which means he could have everything else already yeah he could have everything else it sucks we didn't get a trap card because we're gonna have to out the Haman somehow this dude switched up on us I thought he had a, a god deck now he's got this and he can draw every single turn which is really annoying Raigeki thank god we're playing time thief redoer which perfectly plays around Raigeki and uh we're not gonna chain anything else so we're gonna be able to draw and then we're gonna be able to uh we're also gonna be able to number one draw number two uh banish until the end phase and and obviously, Raigeki does nothing. Should I block this attack? I mean, it's 4,000. It's half our life points, but I should probably save the Threatening Roar for later. 
It's only, it's 4,000 attack, but we still have half our life points, so we're good. I think I think next turn we might need it more, so I'll save it for later. It's gonna end phase. This dude's the goat's gonna come back. We really need to throw a trap card on there. That would be like beautiful. That'd be perfect. Book of Eclipse doesn't really help us right now. We got a monster. All right, so he can't be destroyed by card effect. Yeah, they can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects, but but here's a positive. Uh, they can be destroyed by battle. They can be destroyed by battle. So we can pendulum scale right here and we can attack his monster. So that's still fine. And we're going to discard the sign at ritual. So we're going to attack a no time thief redoer. We're going to activate the dragoodies. And we're going to discard the sign at ritual just in case, you know, that's just something we don't need right now. So we outed the Haman, which is kind of cool. Things are happening right now. I'll say that things are happening. We we should probably set this. I'm just waiting to draw a normal monster and then we're in it, man. We are good to go if we draw a normal monster. Sign of Ritual is not bad if we draw a normal monster right now because we have this. This just got sent to the graveyard this turn, so we'd be able to use all effects of it. Right, we're hoping for trap or spell. That's not a bad monster though to take from them. Dark Beckoning Beast. Are right, they going to use the gate to, I imagine, discard and add back something? Discard Dark Magician. To add back, I don't even know what he's going to add back. Oh, this guy. So I guess he's got one in hand, I, at. I guess he's got one in hand. This guy's good too. He searches Fallen Paradise, but he hard drew it. All right, he's going to end phase here. That's fine. Not a problem. Normal monster. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. We drew this, the, the brick. Is it a monster? Yeah, monster. Okay. God, I definitely don't want to detach it. Like things are going kind of good, kind of bad. That sucks. We had to draw that. We didn't draw the seven normal monsters. We had to draw the one, the one dude. Uh, we don't want to use that. It's whatever though, because we're still in a great game state right now where we're in control. Yeah, but if you look, um, standby phase, we're going to activate this and we got a spell card. That's cool. Golden land. My boy, what is this guy playing? Playing every archetype that's ever been in like in a single game another one of these is going to add one of the big guys yeah we've got so many normal monsters but unfortunately we drew we drew not one of the normal monsters which kind of sucks for us and he's going to be able to add one back which is not good for us i'll say that but it's fine because we still have dragoodies and we still have threatening roar the only thing that sucks now is we have high ritual art which is essentially a dead card in our hand yeah high ritual art is dead and so is the paladin because high ritual art summons from the deck specifically from the deck and we got rid of our ritual spell and we drew this so these are both dead cards now what sucks here is that he's drawing cards so and he his deck is like the greatest deck of all time yeah now he's got eldritch which is just crazy all right depends what he time thief redoer you can absolutely target time thief redoer uh because we're going to use its effect and we have threatening roar still so we're gonna detach i mean it doesn't matter we're gonna detach this and then detach another one. Oh, penguin squire that's pretty cool all right he's gonna use the eldritch to summon itself back or you can add it back and not summon it we're gonna put the chaining on only because I want to make sure to activate this before he uh, enters the battle phase. We also have, to be fair, we also have the Book of Lunar Eclipse, which I could use instead. But if I use Book of Lunar Eclipse, then uh, I think I am going to use the Threatening Roar. Because the problem with the Book of Lunar Eclipse is if I use it and the, I book these, then I can't get over it with your goodies. Actually, I can. It becomes um, half its current attack and half its current defense. So, But then I won't be doing damage, so that's kind of important. All things considered... This has been fairly evenly matched. We keep dodging stuff with Time Thief. Like, this has been fairly evenly matched. Kind of an interesting battle here. It's like a battle of wits. Um, so we're going to go Time Thief Redoer. Uh, yeah, we definitely want to do that. That's without question. And we got a spell. That's cool. Uh, I should probably activate that now. Yeah, I'm going to activate that now. That's, that's, that's something we can go into immediately. Yeah, detach that. The ninja is whatever doesn't really help us I, I these two are discard fodder we literally don't need them we can go into uh, a lot of things actually we can go into penguin squire and go into any rank four actually like i said i wish i didn't draw this uh, because if i didn't draw this we would have had some really sick plays uh but let's see what we can go into we can go into sioux ship and start popping off here a little bit which i think i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna go into sioux ship this is crazy. Like our deck's do our deck is legit doing stuff right now. <laughs> Alright, so what are we gonna set here? I think I'm gonna set the it's level four, right? Ibisu, yeah. Set that. Activate the squire. Squire's gonna summon itself out here. We're gonna yes change your level of squire, reduce its level by one, right? He's a level five, yeah. Reduce his level by one, activate his effect, flip this face up, go into go into crazy box and stuff and, and get really crazy, but um, I don't want to. Why isn't Sioux Ship an option? What's going on? Why, why isn't... Oh, it's an Aqua, so I can't go in. Oh, well, what can you do? Oh, that would have been cool, but whatever. So I guess we can go into the Magic Key Spirit. That's fine. And we can go into this, but unfortunately, this card can't attack. It can do a bunch of stuff that can actually end up 
being harmful for us so maybe we don't want to do that we can go into this because it'll actually it'll search us a card so that's good it'll search us a card which will give us more discard fodder essentially and we do need discard fodder so we're going to summon that out and we're going to search yeah i think our deck is like significantly better than it was before uh, and we still have book of moon which is kind of crazy because that's and this can add back from graveyard too and next turn this is a dragon pulse magician we can actually if we have add emancipator and we summon add emancipator we can go into dragon pulse plus add emancipator we can actually go into this dude and get his first effect to add back any spell it's kind of crazy so we're gonna go ahead and go with that we're gonna add that to our hand we can scale it obviously but it does nothing for us so now we can i th think we just go to battle yeah we go to battle here so we can use your goodies which is not a once per turn and we just get over stuff we attack nope Drug goodies, activate drug goodies. We're gonna discard this dude because obviously we can't use him right now. Get over Eldlich. Eldlich is like eternal right now. He's gonna keep coming back, unfortunately. It would it sucks that we couldn't go into uh uh yeah, drug goodies again. It sucks that we couldn't go into the ritual monster. I think that would have been crazy. And it sucks that we couldn't go into Sue Ship because I would have popped the Fallen Paradise. I think we just pass here. Wow, this has been like kind of kind of crazy um i think we just leave these in hand everything's good right now yeah we just leave it leave leave our oh shoot i could have activated the uh sign it ritual or i should have activated it but it's whatever actually can i even activate that it's going to summon one token anyway because we have uh there can only be one right now what do we get a monster monster is actually what i prefer on his turn because if he ha has like some destruction effect it's better for us to uh, to just summon a monster to, to detach a monster and then basically you know until the end phase oh uh, that's actually pretty good He's going to activate the Magician's Souls. He's going to send a Dark Magician. And which effect did he activate? The Special Summon? He doesn't have to reveal which one it is. So I guess we'll find out when it happens. So he's going to summon the Dark Magician out. That's fine. Like I said, we have the Book of Lunar Eclipse. So even if he goes to Battle Phase... It isn't, even if he doesn't go to Battle Phase, it doesn't matter. Because we have Dragoodies from now until the end of time. So between Dragoodies and Book of Lunar Eclipse, we're, we're good gonna eldritch the golden lord again that's fine because we can literally again we can book of lunar eclipse if we want to but we can also uh, just draw goodies if we want to now right, he's gonna summon the eldritch he probably should have sent uh our card to the graveyard here instead all right he's gonna battle face he's gonna attack that honestly i think i'm just gonna draw goodies again i'm just gonna draw goodies and clear his board and the next turn attack right and that's game so we're gonna cancel activate draw goodies discard dragon pulse magician he's gonna lose his monster he's one last monster he's gonna end phase good with me awesome good with me and he's gonna scoop wow that was a really that was a really good win that was just a solid clean win that deck building we did was really good <laughs> i mean we're doing what our deck is supposed to do that's 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 this is what this is exactly what our deck is supposed to do i'm very happy uh, let's see what we're doing here. We're not going to rank up. Yeah, we got three legacy packs. This was a deserved win. The previous win was not a deserved win. It was just like we loaded it in, and he scooped, and we picked the wrong deck. But that was like a really well. That was that was a very enjoyable game to play. Not just because we won. All right, master pack. We deserve something cool for that. Something cool. I'm not asking for much. Just something cool. Not you know just to even if it improves one of our like background decks. I think that would be cool. Uh, Lava Laval Warrior. Uh, this card is extremely specific, but it's got decent stats, but I, we're past that point. Um, Reaper of Prophecy. Wow, that card looks really cool. Where, when did this come out? Yeah, this is a spell cast, a spell book card that I've never seen in my life. It looks awesome. I don't even know what rarity it comes in. This is a really cool looking card, but we, it doesn't have a use for us in our deck right now. Uh, this is an Iron Core card, which I don't think helps, but this is a select and send not once per turn foolish burial which is kind of cool but we don't have a use for infernoid we don't have enough infernoid some of them are high rarity baba barbers are totally 100 percent generic link monsters i can probably play it but i don't know if it's worth playing this card just kind of like sucks stat wise effect wise like it it, it kind of sucks it lets you target one monster this card points to banish it until the end phase so again stat wise this card sucks but it's something to do with the tokens like, we can use the tokens to make this, but, like, I don't know if that really even benefits us because we can't really link climb into anything. Like, it's not a terrible pull, but it's not a great pull either. And we kind of have that Labyrinth card that works with our deck much better. Temple of the Mind's Eye is just kind of a slow card that makes any damage 1,000. Like, it, it hurts us too, unfortunately. And then we've got, wow, that looks cool. The Battle Landscaper. 
All right, so I just read this card. This card is like a super duper duper, um, the dragon that we have, the one that destroys columns, but like this doesn't summon itself. But this thing's crazy. And if you have it in the main monster zone, you can move it. And then when you move it, it destroys any other zone. You can destroy all columns where it was in between and where it's going and destroy all those columns so this can destroy like a lot of columns with the cards um it's kind of a crazy card it's it's kind of a difficult one to even kind of break down and understand but i don't there's no, this card unfortunately has no way to summon itself um so it's cool but i don't know how i would summon it it's just a two tribute monster i guess with our tokens we can tribute tokens but it, this seems like the type of card that would just kind of break us maybe it goes in our machine pile and just gets thrown in the back and Maybe one day later down the line we get to play. And then for our super rare, Evil Czar. All right, so this card is not really usable. I mean, it's a dinosaur and it's searchable and it's level four and it's got an effect. And that's all cool. But it, this effect is if it's summoned off an Evolite, Evolite, Evol, Evol Tile monster. Um, it gains 200 attack. And then if it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, add an Evol Tile monster. I mean, again, this is just kind of slow. I cut all the dinosaurs out finally, so I don't think this is going to be usable. Uh, but we could actually technically throw it in that dinosaur pile if we if we really needed to. If we ever get a lot of good dinosaurs, which is I don't think is going to happen, but if we do, then we can use this. So the only real like usable card is this, possibly this in the background of like the machine deck, and maybe the the Kratos. All right, so here are the legacy tickets. Only one was glowing, but these glows mean nothing. I've I've literally gotten just normal cards with nothing on them. Uh, this is a free special summon. If our opponent, if we, if if your opponent controls no monsters, you can special summon this card. So technically, this is a free special summon. Essentially, if we're going first or our opponent bricked, but it's a level one monster. So the only thing we can do is like rank one plays with Vigom, um, and Link climbing, which we don't have a ton of. So it, it is not really super usable. It's not a bad card. Uh, Orca Mega Fortress of Darkness is a cool card, but number one, you need Legendary Ocean. Uh, number two, you need Torpedo Fish or Cannonball. So you just need too many cards to make this somewhat usable. But this is actually one of my favorite arc works of all time. This is one of my favorite, like, one of my favorite art. It looks so cool. Uh, I don't know why. It's like a, it's like an orca jumping out of the water. It looks awesome. But unfortunately, it's just not that great. All right, let's see what we get out of this one. We've got Thousand Eyes Idol, Unusable, Donzalu. Oof. Damn. This was like episode five. I threw that in, not even thought about it. But now it's like, now today, well, actually we literally pulled a power creep version of this card. We pulled the, uh, we have a level three tuner. That's an earth that also does what this card does, which is discard a random card from our opponent's hand. We have the, the X saber monster, which is the Arabellum, I think. We literally have this card, but better. So like, it's cool that we pulled Don Zalugi's the homie, but like, I, I, I it doesn't help us, you know. It's cool to see. It's cool to see one of the one of the flashbacks, but unfortunately, he's not usable. Do we have this card? I think we've no, we haven't. This card's not bad at all. If I had a spirit deck, I would definitely play it. It's a free special summon if you banish a spirit. Which, if you know about spirits, most spirits cannot special summon themselves, except for maybe like the ritual ones. Most of them can only normal summon themselves. Um, and this is actually a spirit that can special summon itself, so that's cool. And it destroys a spawn trap card if it destroys a monster by battle. We only have one other spirit that's usable, which is Sukiomi, and then we have some other spirits that are like tribute monster spirits, which unfortunately I don't think this is going to be usable. And then for our super rare or woodland sprite i have no idea why this is a super rare. they cannot be serious send one send one equip card this card point send one send card one card equipped to this card to the graveyard and then inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent's life points that's it that's all that does i who made this a super rare like this of all things i i just don't get it all right so we're back in this section i'm actually gonna cut like i said the sign at rituals the actual uh, ritual spell. I'm going to cut that because it's unsearchable and I don't think it's really useful. I'm going to put the Neo, the Magic Swordsman back in. And basically the only, I'm just going to play this as a brick and uh, this as kind of like an extender. So if I draw this, I can activate it and I can special summon the Paladin of Storm. Um, and then I can basically use it. I can also technically small world this, but I don't think it's worth it to get rid of like sign at mine, like the sign at ritual plus this. I think it's just too much, too much resources. Unfortunately, we, we got lucky and we kind of drew it last turn, but we technically got unlucky. We drew it at a bad time, but I think in nor another normal monster will probably be, be better to play. We have a few bricks in our decks now in our deck now, but I think it's fine as long as we are able to like actually 
get to Time Thief Redo or in combo off and make Exceed plays and Enlightenment Paladin and stuff like that. I think it's better off that we, we play some breaks, but we have a much higher ceiling now. All right, we just lost the coin flip when our opponent chose for us to go first. We have a very interesting hand. Um, we actually have high ritual art, totally usable, totally in play right now, but um, the monster that we summon is, I believe, destroyed during the end phase, or that rich shuffle that ritual monster into the um, into the deck during your opponent's end phase, so there's no point to actually summon it right now. Uh, our best play right now is the Barrier Statue, Crackdown Power Frame is the best play that we have right now. Angus is a fire monster, so we can just leave him for next turn too. Uh, not that we have any way to summon him, but we can just leave him for next turn to do stuff. Uh, but yeah, like we could have summoned it. If this was any other level 4, we would have had Time Thief, Redoer, plus Power Frame, plus Clark Down. So, like, no matter what, if we didn't draw the Barrier Statue, we wouldn't have gone in this direction. But since we did, obviously, this is our main win condition, other than Time Thief. So we might as well, might as well go with it. Our opponent's gonna, our opponent's gonna activate Dino Mist Charge. He's playing Dino Mist. I think Dynamus is a cool deck. I'm not going to lie. I think it's a cool, interesting deck. They have really good cards like Dynamus Howling. Um, I have absolutely no idea why he put Dynamus Charge in a Pendulum Zone. Like, what, of all places, why would you put a Continuous Spell? That's one of the only places you don't want to put it. Dude, it's a Pendulum deck. Why would you put it there? This is a Dynamus Charge you absolutely have to put right here. And now he's going to try to Pendulum stuff, but like, dude, your scales are all wrong, dude. All right, he's going to activate the dyno, dynamic power overload. And yeah, this has been a... I don't know what he's doing. Fusti and Bargain would have been usable if we had... Um, this would have been good if he had any monsters. <laughs> but unfor for, unfortunately for him... Like, literally, this is what I was talking about. Like, even under Barrier Statue, um, we can special summon a normal monster from the hand. And this is a fire, so we could have summoned it, technically speaking. But right now we kind of have like cards that are somewhat dead. But it's fine that they're dead because like what what more would I have been able to do? Uh, they're only dead because our opponent's not doing anything. It's going to activate Dino Miss Howling, which is a great card. Great, fantastic card. But he clogged his own zones, so they are unusable right now. Uh, so I'm just going to enter battle and just attack. Do some, um, some quick body slams on him. Pass. Wow, okay. I'm happy with it. And it's a wrap. Our opponent scooped it up. We are on a roll today. Wow, this is fantastic. This deck has been something else. I'm, I'm glad I changed it. I'm glad I changed it. I did a lot of testing. I'm happy. We're in, by the way, we're in Platinum 5. We're back to Platinum 5. We got another Legacy ticket. and we've got Karate Man, which is not a good card, but we are back. That guy absolutely placed things in the wrong columns. Uh, I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what he was thinking, but he probably didn't have a barrier statue out anyway. All right, let's crack a pack open. It's another shiny pack. What is this? What's going on in there? Whoa! What was that? That looks so fancy. Okay, that looks beautiful. This is what the pendulum column should have looked like on his field. Uh, what do we have here? We already have this. Uh, Lion, Lionheart. We literally already... Were we playing play sets today? I forgot. We, we actually do have this card. We cut it, but... It's not a bad card. Winda, uh, this is the Gusto card. We don't have enough Gustos to make her usable. Miracle Fusion, that is so random. We definitely can't use it. Uh, Symphonic Warrior Drums. Yeah, this is like, changes attributes of Symphonic cards. I, I don't even know how that could possibly be helpful. Uh, this card's decently cool, but it's like kind of a slow... It looks cool. It's kind of like a slow... Uh, what is it called? Artifact. It's like an extra slow artifact, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it has to be when it's destroyed. You can place it in a spawn trap card zone. And then if it's destroyed, the next standby phase, we can summon it back. But, like, we have no way to destroy our own back row during our opponent's turn or at all. So, it's not a bad card, but it can, it can it's a little, a little too slow for us. And then we've got Cyberdark Claw. I don't think this is usable in any way for us. Um, yeah, we don't, we just can't use that right now. Let's look at this UR. Oof! Jeez! Wow! Two level three mo- Talk about a payoff! Wow! Damn! I'm about to start playing the Amazonas cards again because it summons uh, an Earth Warrior. Jeez, that is a good card. This just came off the ban list like two cycles ago. Wow! I don't know if I can use that right now. I mean, we have Arabellum. We have that dinosaur. We don't really have like a level three direction, but damn! Right now, our deck is a level 4 deck, but that is a fantastic, generic, 
free special summon from the deck. I really have to like, I have to really rock my brain. I got, I got to see what's going on in our deck. It might not happen this episode, but this is something I have to like play test. Look, look around what what we have. This is a crazy pull. This summons any like detach a level four Earth Warrior or uh, Earth Warrior or Beast Warrior monster. Any in defense position. Um, destroyed during the end phase. Come on, that's not happening. But its effects aren't negated, so we can literally summon anything. And I really got it. Like I said, I gotta look through what we have because that's kind of crazy. I just realized this is an Earth Warrior right here, but unfortunately, it's not. Uh, it's level four or lower. Or actually, it's specifically level four. That's this is a crazy pull. All right, let's open this Legacy ticket. We only have one Legacy ticket, but you know, sometimes it's crazy. One Legacy ticket is more than enough to do exactly what you need. Uh, Trance Archfiend, is this? I remember this being decent. Uh, this card's not bad, but I, it's not decent. I remember what it was. It was in in the. Uh, I remember what this card is. This was in the. This is actually probably going to go in our Chaos deck. I remember what the, the thing with this card was. This was in our. Um, this was in the Lair of Darkness structure deck. I remember that's why I kept seeing it. Uh, but yeah, this card's this card's okay. Uh, but like I said, it's probably going in our Chaos deck as it, it recurs if it's destroyed by battle. One of the one of our banished dark monsters. It's not bad. Um, it's not a bad card, not a great card. This card, if I remember correctly, yeah. So discard two cards, target one monster, and change it to face down defense position. This is like, we have the double book of moon. This is like double discard, single book. We have the single discard, double book. This is the complete opposite of that. Plus, not only is it double discard for one face up monster to go face down, um, also, it's not a quick effect like the double book of moon that we have. So this card is terrible. I remember this card before the original errata of this card was super goofy because the original errata of this card used to say uh, you can just change one face up monster to face down. So you could change a face up attack position monster to face up attack position to face down the attack position. It was like a weird ruling with this card a long, long, long time ago, but uh, just a terrific card. And this came out in spell ruler. Or technically at the time, Magic Ruler. One of the best sets of all time in terms of spells. This this monstrosity is in there. Alright, so this is our first game of Platinum 5 of the new season. So it's interesting. We draw our Ritual Art every turn. Where are our normal monsters? I mean, it doesn't matter. Because honestly, our hand's not bad. Because we have playable things. But like, dude, where are they? Um, so... I'm going to say we can save this. I mean, if we draw a normal monster, we have so many different plays next turn. So one of them has to go. Like, I don't know who's going to have to go, but I'm going to say this brings a monster with it. So I'm going to say Adam Emancipator Analyzer. It's probably best. So we're going to set that and then activate the Squire. And then our opponent can obviously max C and stuff. If they max C, this really sucks. I mean, we have no choice. We got to get We got to roll with it. Nothing we can do here. Not only do we have to special summon Penguin Squire, we also have to special summon Time Thief Redoer. So we are indeed going to have to. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to do our thing here. It doesn't matter. We have no choice. We have to give him a plus one. He's going to activate something. He has a response. Actually, I'm going to see if I could bait out a negate. Hopefully, he doesn't have uh, a gamma. If he has a gamma, we scoop. But hopefully, we can bait out a negate here. Oh, it negated itself. Perfect. All right, so he thought about it. He, I think he has probably an imperm. We can go with Crazy Box. We can go with... Actually, we can go with this guy, but this guy doesn't really do anything right now for us. I mean, it can search a normal, so next turn we can do something, but I think Time Thief is just... 99% of the time, Time Thief is the better option. Fortunately, we don't have any back row to like back up the Time Thief with anything, so we just kind of have... We kind of have lackluster plays right now, but it's fine, I guess. And then we just pass here. We have no choice. Our hand was was a little bit, a little bit dicey. I mean, like you can't really complain. Ah, uh, shit! I spoke too soon. Ah, uh, this is the last deck I want to play against. Big welcome, Labyrinth. Um, I'm out of here. I'm not. I'm not gonna beat that. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not beating that. I'm not beating that. All right. So we just won the coin flip and we chose to go first and our hand is solid. I, I'm not complaining. We got Arabellum, Barrier Statue, and uh, we drew the brick, but it's whatever. We drew the brick. I'll, I'll draw. I'm willing to draw the brick here and there. And we'll just pass here. We 
I don't know why, but we haven't been drawing these normal monsters. Maybe we have to up the amount, and then we'll draw more of them. So maybe I'll up the normal monster amount, maybe cut the ninjas, ninja engine. I'll see, I'll see what I have to do. Just gonna reinforcements of the army, which is fine. Again, we have threatening roar here, so we have, we definitely have follow-ups for sure. Our opponent's gonna set and just pass. We have Arabellum, so this game state is actually kind of cool. A wandering is pretty cool too, because it works under barrier statue because the tokens are fire. Um, let's enter the battle phase and just attack directly. So we're gonna attack with the Arabellum, and then we get the discard. It's just really cool. Oh, nice call by the grave. Although our deck doesn't lose to call by the grave whatsoever. So I mean, it's kind of pointless to discard a call by the grave. I'm gonna line things up here, just in case. Uh, TM uh, Tiamon Dragon is becomes usable, so I'm gonna line that up there. And then I'm gonna put the auto chaining on because I want to activate the. Uh, this has to be face up. So if the monsters are destroyed for the monsters effect to be uh to, for the effect to special summon a token like it already has to be face up so i can't chain it so i might as well put it into play as quickly as possible uh this is a really good board state by the way this is like actually kind of nice so he's going to summon that i'm perfectly fine with that i don't even know what that is but i'm fine with it and i don't even know what that is and he scoops just like that solid solid win so we have our strategies down it's time thief and it's barrier statue. I mean, that's that's our deck, and I'm proud of it. And that's what we're gonna do. All right, all right, two legacy tickets. All right, let's open our pack. We are on a roll today. We've been pulling some usable cards, and on top of that, we've been uh, pretty good in terms of everything else. All right, this card has like eight million restrictions, but it basically summons a synchro monster from the graveyard. We don't synchro summon enough to be usable there. This requires a black wing monster plus a non-tuner monster. Um, not bad, but we don't have enough like. We don't have enough of these, essentially, black wings, like, in circulation to be usable right now. It just doesn't work for us at the moment, but it's pretty... Another heretic card. Do we pull a heretic, like... Like, every every single episode we pull heretics, which is kind of crazy, but this is one we already have. Uh, another spirit monster. This one's actually not bad. Yeah, you, if this card is normal summoned while well, you can... Um, if another spirit monster is normal summoned while well, this card's on the field, draw a card. Uh, that's not once per turn, so if you have, like, multiple spirit summons... Um, you can do this. So this this card's pretty good in Shino Birds. It, yeah, it's not it's not once per turn. This card's kind of crazy. It's, it's, I'm sorry, it is a once per turn, but it's not a hard once per turn. It's a soft once per turn. So if you have two Shino Bird Cranes, you draw two cards. Um, that's interesting, but I don't think we have enough spirits to play that. This is um, an Evil Swarm card. Again, I don't think we have enough of that right now, so we can't really use it. Mech Knight is a free special summon no matter what so this is just going in our chaos deck 100 percent um this is a tie dangle card uh this card's not bad like probably one of the better tie dangle cards uh but that's not saying much and that just doesn't have a use in our deck and then we got photon advancer uh if you remember correctly we have the photon that switches to defense mode we have him but we only have like that's the only other photon we have is this and this and this card's cool because you can special summon if you control a photon but like we only have one other photon so uh, fortunately at the time i don't think this is this is really usable so honestly none of this stuff is usable for us at the moment right now this goes in our chaos deck this is just probably it's cool that we pulled it but it just doesn't it works with one card so it's, it's kind of bricky and then heretic like i said it, we're gonna eventually play max rarity heretics because every single Every single week we pull, every single episode we pull multiple heretics. All right, let's crack open these legacy tickets. Let's see what we get out of here. Sonic Maid, this is a really expensive card if you ever find it. Um, this doesn't exist in the TCG, but it looks super weird. Uh, for good reason, it doesn't exist in the TCG. It's a weird looking card. Let's see what else we get. Uh, this is something we pulled. Uh, yeah, this is basically a self DK card, I believe. Essentially, it's like, a, yeah, we gain 3,000, but if this card leaves the field, you lose 3,000. So it's just like a lot of nothing's happening. We pulled the best XYZ card a long time ago, but we don't have any of the pieces. We don't have any of the fusions. And this just doesn't work with the rest of our deck. But I mean, we'd have to pull so much of it to actually play it. And then we'd ha we'd still lose. We'd probably lose more than we with, than we do with our existing deck. Um, yeah, none of these cards are usable. Nothing we pulled so far out of both the legacy and the master pack of of just now is usable all right uh we just won the coin flip and our hand is pretty solid 
And our opponent just scoops as soon as we get here. Okay. It's our second time today. I don't even know what to say. Okay. All right, so we got three legacy tickets for a totally unearned win. We got a level up, which means we're probably getting free gems. This is what our opponent was playing. So why they scooped, I have no idea. Their deck is a trillion times better than our deck. Like, look at this. This is a good, good deck. They have TPE. They have generators. They have every. This is a really, 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 really solid deck. I'd play this deck. All right, let's open these packs. The last pack was sort of a dud. So hopefully this one works out and is a little bit better than that. Uh, we've got a punk card, which at the moment I don't think is usable for us because it says punk a million times. And when your opponent activates a card, targets, yeah, I don't think that helps us right now. Left arm of the forbidden one. Uh-oh. If we pull the rest, I'll use the double dust tornado we already have and we haven't used. Shallow Grave literally works with the tie dangle card we just pulled. But the issue is, again, it's one of these things where it's like, oh, we pull a card that combos with this other card. But it's like there's two specific cards that combo off with each other that don't really work otherwise, which is eh, maybe not the best situation. Um, and it lets our opponent special summon. And then our opponent has to have a monster in the graveyard in order to be able to special summon. So a lot of things have to go right. Um, also, this works with the Penguin Squire, too. It's kind of cool. So it works with the penguin and it works with the tide angle. So we got to keep this in mind. It's not a bad card, but again, it's not really usable unless our opponent has a monster in their graveyard. Uh, this is the worst of the Eldritch Trap cards that exist. And now we have two copies of it because we pulled it before. Natasha. Uh, this is not a bad card. We, I don't think I have the ritual spell. I mean, actually, we do have the ritual spell, but we have no way to really search the ritual spell. I know I'm saying this as I have a ritual monster, but like we can't search it. Um, and then we got Dino Mist. After that Dino misplayer misplayed, and we got the Megalith Ophiel, uh, which is a good card, but I mean, I don't think I'm going to use this. Yeah, this isn't bad, but like, I don't have any other Megalith cards. Maybe we could possibly use it, but we don't have any other Megalith cards. Natasha's not bad. A lot of stuff that's like not bad, shallow grave, but nothing, nothing great either. All right, let's open our legacy tickets. I, I don't, you know, honestly, those pa the pack, that, that master pack kind of sucked, but like, truth be told, it was an unearned win anyway. Castle Wall started at Kaiba. Uh, Mist Valley Windmaster. I've never seen that. That's a goofy looking card. Okay, so basically what this card does is if both players have five or more cards in their hand, this card make all mo make both people send uh, cards until they have four. Like, what? That's just uh, so not good. I, I don't see the point of that. Uh, Castle Walls obviously is a really old card. That's not very good. This pack is shining for no reason because... Before we've gotten cards. Ah, oh, Ocean's not bad. Ocean's not bad. I think we already have. No, we don't have it. Ocean's not bad. We keep pulling like hero stuff here and there, and Ocean's not like a terrible card. Who's this guy with the wig? Is that Joey Wheeler? What is that? All right, so this card is like very, very specific. It can make all monsters gain one level and become dark. I guess we can do that with our level fours to make them level fives and then go into rank five place. I. I I don't know. It's a Karibo with Joey's wig. A creature seizure. This is actually not bad. So if our again, this is a, this is a going second card that's actually not bad. Um, basically, if we have a normal monster on our side of the field, we can give one of our monsters to our opponents. It's basically a creature swap, but uh, yeah, it's creature swap, but you get to like you pick instead of your yeah it's basically creature swap but it has to be with a normal monster which we have normal monsters so if our opponent has like a crazy boss monster we can't out we can switch with our opponent it's honestly not a bad card for the deck that we're playing right now i might 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 play this i might play this and then for our super is this dude which stat wise isn't bad it negates all card effects in our opponent's pendulum zone. It's not a bad card. It's just not a lot of pendulum decks are really running around right now. But it is a good pendulum scale, obviously. It's a low scale. It's a nice three. Three is perfect for us. It's a normal dragon. So we can immediately play this in our deck. And it probably has better stats than some of the other normal monsters that we have. So if we make it, if we make the um, magic key monster, this is actually better than some of the other cards. So I think we should, we should play this. All right. So to check things out a little bit here, uh, I am going to cut... I still haven't used this, the Suppressor and Collider, because this thing basically um, is usable with this. Uh, because we, we can basically do is we contribute this to Special Summon Suppression Collider, 
which I don't think I'm actually going to do because Suppression Collider is actually worse than Time Thief Redoer. So I think I'm going to cut this. I don't think there's a point to play it. So I'm going to add another normal monster, which is going to be this Vector Pendulum here. Um, and then Creature Seizure is interesting. I'm not going to lie. Creature Seizure is an interesting card. I kind of want to play this too. Because the more normals we play, the more viable this card actually becomes. It can basically like steal our opponent's boss monster. If they have like one, if they're, we're in a board state where our opponent has like one really, really good card. Like that duel where they had like a Haman on the field. Like we had an out to it, but like let's say we didn't. We could have activated this and then gave them a normal monster and taken their Haman. That would have been kind of crazy. Um, and in general, it's like if they just have a really, really good monster that we can't out. Like let's say the Chaos Max. We can take their Chaos Max and then give them a normal monster. As a matter of fact, we can give them a Megalo Smasher in defense mode and then like make them... And then just attack into it because it's zero defense. It's kind of crazy. Um, it's definitely not an, not a bad idea. Maybe not this duel, but I mean that. That's definitely not a bad idea. It's an interesting card for sure. Alright, we just lost a coin flip. Our opponent's going first. They are playing Vanquish Soul. Our hand isn't terrible. I don't know if it's enough to beat Vanquish Soul, but it's not a terrible hand. Yeah, I don't I don't think our hand is beating Vanquish Soul. I think they drew kind of a crazy hand. They drew the uh, the starter and they also searched out Soul Caesar already, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, I don't I don't think I'm going to be able to to beat this right now. So I think I'm just going to get out of this one. I don't, I don't think I'm beating this. All right, we just lost a coin flip. Our opponent's going first. Our hand is Looking pretty decent, honestly. It, it honestly is looking pretty decent. We've got Painful Twister, Cubic Ascension. We've got the Dragon Pulse Magician. We have Vigom, which is definitely not a good draw with the uh, Cubic Ascension. I don't know what our opponent's playing. I have. Uh, they're probably playing an FDK. Oh, never mind. Maybe they brick. Never. I, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna be quiet. They have Mystic Walk, and then they have Utopia. I, I don't know what's going on here. It seems like they didn't do much of anything. I'll tell you that. All right. So I'm fairly sure that we're getting FDK here because they made number 100, and they have this dude. I'm pretty sure we're about to get FDK here. Obviously, I can't stop it because I don't play uh, hand traps, or I, I, you know, I, I don't have hand traps. But if we're not getting FTK, then I do have a play. Trap Trick, we're getting FTK. Yep. Mario, he's going to set the destruction. He's going to rank up right now. This is actually kind of a cool FTK. He's going to target this for destruction. And then he's going to summon something else. And he's going to basically burn us for the amount that he's about to gain. Yep, here comes Manipulator of Souls. That's the card. So he's going to destroy that. Gain 3, 13. And then we're going to lose... Um, we're going to lose 13. I think it's a pretty cool FDK. Like I said, if you don't have hand traps, that's an auto loss. But honestly, I think if we would have hand trapped them on the Dragonair, we probably would have just auto won. I think he would have just scooped because that's literally what his deck does. All right, we just lost a coin flip. Our hand's not looking too bad. Um, but they make a full Galaxy Eyes board. I don't think I don't think we're beating this. All right, so our opponent just ended on just the Solar Flare, and that's it. I would have thought that he would have done much more than that, but this is completely doable right now. So we're going to go ahead and actually special summon out the Analyzer. And we have multiple interruptions here. He's going to... That's not good. I mean, Spooky Dog would just gain some life points. I don't really care, because as long as our, our board state is healthy, I don't really care that he does that. So we're going to do that. He's going to gain life points. I'm going to activate this. Hopefully I bait and negate if I can. We can get a negate out of him for free. Nope, we're not going to do it. One of these days, we actually have to play some rocks. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter what order they go back, because it's literally irrelevant. Um, we can also go for the Golden Ninja. I think we will. What I'm saying is we can, we can actually activate it and then go for a card from the... Yeah, we can go for... I don't care how much life points he gains. Like I said, I just... My goal is, you know, to create a good game state. Um, so, actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to discard a trap, which I think I'm going to discard Power Frame, actually, because I think it has the least use utility for us, because, obviously, the Banish is crazy. So, we're going to discard that, even though this floats, technically. And then if he ashes this, it's actually fine that he ashes this, because we... Uh, yeah, it's actually good that he ate the ash, because then later, we don't have to get ashed on anything else later on, so it's perfect, actually, that that happened. 
So that gets ashed, and then our real goal was actually to make Time Thief Redoer the whole time anyway. And actually, we can go into all, like I said, we can go into all of this. So we can actually go into this and burn him for a whole bunch of life points, but obviously he's gaining life points, so dumb to do that. We can also go into Sue Ship, pop whatever this is, but again, usually this is going to be the best play. So we're going into Time Thief here. He's going to gain some more life points, but again, I don't, I don't really... I don't really care how many life points he gains because, again, the, the, the goal is to make a game state that's the best possible game state for our, for us. So now we attack. And we get over that. So his board is essentially empty. And we are, like I said, in a pretty fine game state right now. This is a weird hand trap to play on here because it's like... Maxi is, Maxi is around. Like, why even bother playing the spooky dogwood? Maxi is like in every way just better than Spooky Dogwood. We got a monster, which is actually a monster we don't want to detach. This card's kind of good in the graveyard for him. Actually, he's going to go to end phase, and I'm fine with that. I'm just going to leave things as they are. He's going to scoop. That was weird. Um, I expected, when I, saw, when I saw Galaxy, I expected so much. I literally changed tabs and started doing something else, and then he ended on like a solar flare. That's, I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know if he bricked. I don't know where he went with it, but I'm happy we won. All right, so we got four, five legacy tickets. God damn. That is a crazy amount of legacy tickets. That is a lot. I think that's the most we ever got in one like sitting. That's crazy. It's like times one, times one, times one, times two. What? All right, let's open this pack. I, I legitimately think, I think this is the best deck, like the best version of our deck that we've ever built. Like I never thought... Like, I sat down and I made this, and I was like, I never thought that this would work. We're just playing a bunch of normal monsters, and they happen to have great synergy with things. Uh, Jam Breeding Machine is a token generator, but I think it's a little too slow. During your standby phase, a little too slow. Um, another Bujin card, but as I said before, even if we pulled every Bujin card, I don't think it would be enough. Another Jurak card. Uh, these are kind of slow. They, like, rely on the battle phase. This one's actually not bad, but... You can, if it destroys a monster by battle, we can special summon another Jurak monster with 17 inches or less attack. But it can't declare an attack. It's a little slow. But it's not bad. I guess you could you can do this, attack, destroy something, and then summon... Um, if we summon a level 4, we can go into Time Thief. Actually, we can, we can go into that one that searches, right? It's actually not a bad combo. But again, it's a little slow. It's, it's worse than what we have now. Melodious Diva card. I don't believe I have enough stuff to... Yeah, we, I don't think I have enough stuff. This is actually isn't bad, though. Once per turn, target three cards in any graveyard, banish them. That's actually not bad. And that's every single turn. That's not. This is not... A, this is like a call by the grave times three on legs quick effect. This card's not bad. I, I don't have... Do I... I might have the Melodious Diva Fusion. I don't know if I have the monsters. This... Like I said, this is actually not a bad card. Sunseed Twin. Uh, we don't have a Sun Avalon Link monster, so can't use that right now. Um, Senator. This card's actually not a terrible card. If we had more beasts slash beast warriors and stuff like that. I'm not going to build a whole deck around them, but like this card's not... This card's honestly not, not terrible. And then we've got Miracle Rupture, which is another fossil card. Uh, we have a lot of fossil cards, but not enough to fully play them. And then we have multiple copies of this. And then we've got Ancient Gear Beast, which is not very usable right now. But I mean, it's cool. It just can't be special summoned. Uh... But it's cool because it like negates your opponent's monster that's destroyed by battle, and they can't activate spawn trap cards when it attacks. Like it's a, again, not, a pack that's not like not a horrific pack, just nothing usable at the moment. Like like they're cards that aren't bad, but not really usable for us in the exact moment we're in right now with the direction we're going. All right, let's open our five five legacy packs. That's a lot of legacy packs. There's a lot of crazy stuff we could pull out of here, and a lot of stuff that isn't very crazy. So we'll see what direction this is. Uh, Axe Dragon's pretty good. This is uh, basically 2,000 attack normal summon. Uh, it's pretty good, but like at the stage we're in, I don't think this is even like fully usable. We do have that XYZ monster, the or Xseed monster, the one that is requires two Dark Dragons. Not bad, but again, I'm not putting it into this deck. It might go in our Dragon Warrior deck. It might go into our Chaos deck, but I don't think this is going in our existing deck, because right now, things are... We're on a roll. Uh, this is a Gemini monster. Do I even have to read it? All right, so, like, as far as Gemini monsters goes, like, this actually, honestly, isn't that bad. Artwork-wise, it looks kind of cool. 
Um, the first time it would be destroyed by battle, it's not destroyed. Uh, during your opponent's end phase, you can pay 500 life points and then normal summon. Basically, during your opponent's turn, um, a Gemini monster or normal summon a face-up Gemini monster. Like All of these effects are actually not not bad. I can't even like hate too much. Um, but it's, uh, it's just we don't really have enough Geminis. And again, even if I had a bunch of Geminis... I don't have enough of this guy to make those Geminis good. So right now, I don't think he's, it's really usable. All right, next pack. Uh, Dungeon Worm is not a usable card. Proto Cyber Dragon is not a usable card at the moment, but we pulled it. That's cool. I mean, it's not it's not a super bad card, but again, it's not super usable either. Um, Skull Dog Marin can't be used black man eating or man eating black shark is not really usable right now this is a three card fusion that's 2100 attack and level five wait that's a crazy looking card he's ready to go he's got like his arms he's ready to fight a crazy card all right let's uh let's see what else we get here let's see we've got metaboo globster <laughs> I'm not even going to address why that's funny. All right. This card is actually good, actually. <sighs> as weird as I thought this card was going to be, it's actually not a bad card. Basically, if you tribute this for the tribute summon of a dark monster, which we have, we have that machine monster. Uh, if we tribute this for the this tribute summon of a dark monster, we can special summon three tokens to the field. Uh, and then, obviously, you know, those tokens can be used for link plays it's actually not a bad card it's definitely something 1 million percent if i had pulled in like episode like if i pulled this four or five episodes ago i probably would have used it but again the direction we're going this just doesn't really fit our deck but i think it's cool but i say that and let's be real i i could just be like okay this deck's not working like, let's say we keep climbing platinum and i could be like okay this deck's not working i might come back to this card because honestly not a bad card uh dd vice typhoon so this card's not bad, it lets you fusion summon DDD monsters, but we don't have a way to get it in the graveyard. I don't think we have any DDD fusion monsters. Like We're missing too much stuff to make that a usable card right now. It's not bad though, it lets you fusion summon. Let's see what else we get. Uh, we've got Trust Guardian. Alright, so this card is a little odd. It basically can be used only for a synchro summon of a level 7 or no, a level 6 or lower synchro monster and then that monster can't be destroyed by battle once. Uh, which I would hope it can't. Um, and then basically loses 400 attack and defense if that happens. So uh, this card's not very good, unfortunately. And then we've got Musician King, which is a really odd card. Which of the Black Forest and Lady of Faith. Um, neither of which we have. So we can use it. Um, yeah, we can use that. So these pulls have been complete duds. So the Master Pack was kind of a dud. And then, of course, this was also a dud. But what is cool is that we're getting so many packs. We got to get the crap packs out of the way. Let's be honest. We have to get the bad packs out of the way so we can get to the good packs. Also, we've had such great pack luck that we can't really complain when we have some duds here and there. Especially since, again, the, we got to get the garbage out of the way so we can finally get back to like the really good pulls. All right. Next game, we just lost the coin flip, so our opponent's going first. Our hand is okay. It's not the worst. Uh, we've got a few different ways to get the Time Thief or E-Doer. We've got Upstart Ninja, and we've also got a Mecha Phantom Beast, which is actually, with any other normal monster, a one-card uh, Time Thief or E-Doer. And then we've also got Power Frame. It's not the worst hand in the world. I guess we'll see what our opponent's playing. Depending on what they're playing, this, this could be... Uh, a winnable game this could be a non they're just ended all right that's good to see i think i'm gonna go with the mecha phantom beast route if i can um that's not the best draw for us right now yeah like i said i think the mecha phantom beast it, route is best because we don't have to give up anything so we just gotta hope we don't get like max seed so we're gonna hopefully normal summon activate get a token uh they can have max c they can have a oh, gamma gamma's just really good uh, yeah, I mean, we have to, we have to go with that. I mean, that's Gamma. Yep, they're going to successfully Gamma, destroy our cards. I'm not even going to set the Power Frame because Power Frame only helps when you have a monster. And if I set it, I'm just going to lose it next turn. I can't use Upstart Ninja. So it was kind of pointless there. Uh, Gamma was great in that situation for him. He got rid of our monster and everything. All right, so he's playing Super Heavy Samurais. We have zero shot against this deck. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and scoop it up. All right, we just lost the coin flip again. 
Uh, but it's not the end of the world. Our hand is actually looking pretty good. Um, outside of the fact that we don't have access technically to Time Thief. But, I mean, it's fine. We have the Iron Dragon. We have the um, Mateon. Ma yeah, Mateon. Um, we have the Embodiment of the Apophis. He's playing Sword Soul, so... This could get very, very bad for us. But it just depends on what version of Sword Soul he's playing. So, I mean, I, it depends on what, he's, what he ends on. That's what I mean. Alright, so they're going to go into this dude right here, which is not the end of the world, because he's, yeah, okay, so his board is actually kind of weak. Um, he just ended on that, and we can 100% out this card, so we're kind of good here. Alright, so this card is a little bit annoying to deal with, but it's fine, because Mateon um, literally outs this card, so I'm actually kind of fine with it. And I don't think I'm going to be able to use the Iron Dragon, because, I mean, I can technically use the Iron Dragon, but if I do... Uh, and I, if I special summon a monster, he can banish one of those monsters. Um, so, I, he's going to banish the monster that I summon. So, essentially, there's no point to really... There's no point to really special summon the Iron Dragon right now. So, I'm just going to go to battle phase and kind of deal with this dude. It's going to affect Valor. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, affect Valor definitely does suck. Uh, he could go to battle, but I mean, it's obviously not going to help. So I think I'm just going to set two and pass. Uh, I am going to set... I mean, I can pop with the Parallel Twister. Because he doesn't have any protection anyway. Yeah, I can pop with the Parallel Twister. And then attack directly. That's probably my best bet right now. Because I need this guy off the board. He, this guy provides too much value for him. So I kind of have to do that. So I'm just going to send this to Grave. And I'm going to pop this thing right here. And he's gonna he can burn us uh, and banish our Parallel Twister. But we're still going to be able to out his monster anyway. So he's going to burn us and we're going to pop his monster. Uh, we would attack, but there's no point to attack. So we just pass here. Uh, next turn we have some plays, but... Obviously we're not in the best position either here. That Effect Veiler actually did uh, kind of help him out there. In a Pot of Desires. That's a card I would love to... I would love to pull. And now he's going into the sort of the ten ye stuff. Which fortunately we do have the maintenance, the uh, Mateon, but Mateon doesn't really actually help us that much because he can go into whatever he needs to. Uh, he, if, he, if he goes into Chao Yang, I think that's the one. Uh, he can negate our a face up monster, so it doesn't really help. As long as we can keep him off of Sword Soul monsters like Mo Yi and stuff like that, we're good. All right, he's gonna go into. Shaman, but Shaman locks into uh, specifically what's it called? Shaman specifically locks into I think uh, ten ye effects, so he can't activate any non ten ye effects. So that's you know pretty good. But he can actually bring back any worm, so yeah, he can bring back the the synchro monsters too because they were properly summoned, which does suck. Now this battle phase he can't really attack because uh, I mean I hope he attacks. I really hope he attacks because. Obviously, if he attacks, we get to shuffle his monster back. Yeah, he's going to go to main phase, not attack. Smart, not to attack, and he's going to go to end phase. Uh, now, again, we're dealing with the same monster, essentially, which is quite annoying. Uh, Synchro Zone is useless right now. Um, Maiden is going to out himself. Unfortunately, he's going to out himself, but Synchro Zone is cool uh, because we can Iron Dragon and do some stuff here yeah we can we can definitely iron dragon among other things which i think i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna iron dragon um i'm gonna get rid of synchro zone because obviously it's a dead card anyway so i think i just set this and then we just activate this and trash this entire column and then we can do stuff with the barrier statue and the squire and we'll see what we want to do with the barrier statue and the squire so uh, summon it here and we're going to demolish this entire um this entire area and of course he can banish our monster because he did we did special summon one monster but we are going to get in for some good damage here Yep, he's going to activate to banish our monster. Nothing we could really do about it. I would have actually liked to keep the Synchro Zone because obviously the Synchro Zone, um, uh, since that, yeah, so that sucks for us. Um, so now we have to do other stuff. So, we still have to out this, this barrier. We still have to out this Sword Soul dude, unfortunately. So we're going to normal summon here. Um, change the level, yes reduce it by one um i think we flip this dude face up i think his effects are actually negated and so that means we can actually go into all of the things including the time thief now the problem is time thief without a trap card is kind of not as useful as we'd like it to be 
Uh, Sioux Ship might actually be the better card in this situation. We can attack over this and then pop this and then they're basically stuck playing what's in their hand. You can also go into Time Thief, but I actually think the Sioux Ship in this case is actually better. So I'm going to go into the Sioux Ship right now. Because again, he's going to be able to uh, do more effects for us. I would have loved to stay on the Barrier Statue, but the Barrier Statue just kind of does nothing for us right now. So we're going to attack into this. And then we're going to activate the Sioux Ship. And we're going to pop the Synchro Monster. And we get to pop two cards. Like I say, it was just that is definitely the better option right now. It's rare that Sue Ship is better than Time Thief, because in most situations he's going to be better, but in that rare case, because there's no guarantee that I get a trap card off the top of the deck. And um, if I had just gotten a monster off the deck, I would have I would have just lost and I wouldn't have been able to out that board. So I guess in, in this one situation, it actually is the better card. And then we still got the synchro zone. So if we draw a barrier statue, we can be in an absolutely splendid situation right now. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, that could be a number of things though. Just because just because that happened doesn't mean it. You know, just because he set a card doesn't mean a good or a bad thing. Why is it asking me so much? I don't want to do that. All right, so let's draw. And Neo, the swordsman isn't terrible at all. I can just normal summon attack. It's decent attack here. So normal summon enter battle. Um, we'll just attack. I don't know why he set that. Because I mean, maybe it's a mirror force. So I guess he set that. Maybe he set it to bait us <laughs> into popping it. But I'm just gonna pop it anyway. I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to bait it to pop. He's going to Gamma. So I guess maybe he did bait us. He's going to Gamma our Sioux ship. That sucks. And he's going to summon those two in attack mode, and we're going to lose that. That sucks. Okay, um, so he's summoned this in attack mode. So I'm just going to attack over it. And the other one's going to banish itself, so it's fine. I just want to get in for some extra damage. And now we just end phase, and that's going to get banished because of the effect yep and that's going to get banished so now he can't use any more drivers so the one driver's gone at least at least that's good hopefully he just, he just doesn't draw any of like the main starters as long as he doesn't draw the main starters end of main phase is good good to see as long as he doesn't draw any of the like starters we're kind of good here see we got that's pretty good that's pretty solid uh so now we can just normal summon this uh this has more attack on field right now than going into any of our monsters so we're gonna go to battle phase first and we're gonna attack. Yeah, we're gonna attack twice and then we're gonna go into who we need to go into and you already know who that is. We're gonna go into Time Thief. So we've already been a Time Thief, now we're going to this. This wouldn't actually be too bad defender because we have a lot of normal monsters in play. Uh, this wouldn't be too bad because we get another normal monster and it would be impervious to dark and light attacks, um, which wouldn't be too bad, but Sword Soul has a lot of like other stuff So this actually isn't too bad because at the start of damage get a step if it battles um, The same attribute as the normal monsters as material we can detach and send that monster But they can just you know like out us beforehand. So I think time thief is just Just the best to go into right now We're gonna go ahead and to go and go into time thief redoer and I guess we just pass now and, and hopefully we can uh, we can make things happen with this it just depends on what we pull off the top of his deck. But we also have the Synchro Zone, which is kind of still in the background here. All right, let's see what we get off of his deck. Hopefully it's a trap. That would be amazing. We got, what is that, a monster? Oof, not, not a trap. End of main phase. Good to see. Woo! That guy, that was a great win. Uh, that guy, I don't know if he kind of, he didn't really brick though. He didn't really brick because he could have done better plays and at the same time he had he had good plays in rotation there's no excuse he didn't break he didn't break he just he just maybe he played wrong he didn't play the most like meta package but he never saw moe uh we got no legacy packs but it's fine i'm getting a master pack and that's what matters all right time for a master pack uh let's see what we can get we haven't had like very very impactful cards all episode in terms of like things that have uh our deck's been better overall but like we haven't had like super impactful stuff all right, so this just inflicts life points to our opponent if we lose an XYZ monster. And our opponent can also respond and make it so we actually uh, lose uh, life points. So unfortunately, I don't think this card's going to be good for us unless we're trying to like win in some weird like time situation. This is a good card, uh, but it requires a spellcaster to be usable. So if we control spellcaster, we can special summon this card. Pretty good, actually. It's a rank. It's a level 4, so you can get us to a rank 4. Overall, not a bad card. I'd have to look at the... We don't have too many level... If we had more level 4 spellcasters, I would actually play this. Uh, but I don't think this is actually going to be playable for us. It, it, it is kind of cool. And then also, if it's destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can target a 1500... 
attack, 200 defense, except this, and then special summon, which I think we have. It's that um, nefariousness monster. He's also a level 4 that special summons himself if we have a spellcaster. So both not bad cards at all. So our second copy of Soul Scissors. Um, again, it's not bad for the Chaos deck. Uh, this is a Magistus card. I don't think this is going to be usable, but... Actually, it's not terrible either. During your main phase, you can special summon a level 4 spellcaster from your hand. So oddly enough, this actually works with this right here, or on Ryu. Um, so again, if we have level 4 spellcasters, that'd be like beautiful for us, but I don't believe that we do. Uh, but it's cool that we're like pulling a little things that are synergizing, which is cool. But that is overall, this is not a bad card. Uh, Battling Boxer, Glassjaw. This isn't a bad card, but I have to see how many we have but we need level four special summons not just random level fours this requires a ddd tuner i know it's not a bad card but it requires a ddd tuner and i don't believe we have that let me guess is this a ddd tuner no it's not that would, only, that would have been cool the cerberus is a cool card though um it's a nice scale it's a six maybe maybe we'll play this we'll see um yeah maybe we'll see yeah, ddd i don't think i'm going in that direction then we got short circuit another battery man card again Again, this pack's not, like, terrible because we got some cards that are usable possibly in other builds of the deck because I am willing to change the deck over and over and over and over and play different versions every episode if I want to, if I have to. Um, and Ron Rui is a cool pull. So is the Tri... Tri... What is this? Tri... Tri... Tri Magistus. I think it's a cool... Co Look at this artwork, by This is a beautiful artwork. Um, yeah, this... I, I think these two are good cards. Uh, two DDD cards is kind of cool. We keep pulling Battery Men, but, like, that archetype is so lackluster. I'd rather pull... A Thunder Dragon Colossus, that would be nice. And then Soul Scissors, like I said, not really... Uh, we already have multiple copies. I'm not putting any of this stuff into the deck yet, so let's get into another game because we didn't get a Legacy ticket. All right, we just lost the coin flip. Our hand is really not bad at all. We've got... Uh, what is this? Mateon. I don't know why I like, trip up on this name every time. we got Mateon, which is kind of cool. Uh, we've got There Can Only Be One, Cubic Ascension, Dragoodies, Battle Ox. Cool, cool, cool options here. They are playing... Despia, not Despia. Yeah, they are doing Despia. Um, they, they're playing branded Despia, and they seem to have opened not like the nuts, but they've opened what they need to summon a Mirror Jade. And Mirror Jade kind of absolutely destroys Mateon, unfortunately. But we'll see. We'll see which version they end on. Because as long as they end on the guy that special stops us from special summoning because lately i've seen that they've gone more into the stop your opponent from special summoning guy more than mirror jade if they go into stop your opponent from special summoning guy we're actually good we're going to totally out that board um and yeah like we actually might win that game but if they end on a mirror jade we probably lose all right so our opponent actually did end on the mirror jade and they ended on the branded beast on one hand i'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of proud of him for for not taking the degenerate route and ending on the lock your opponent out of special summoning route. But on the other hand, I actually would have preferred that he did that uh, because it would have uh, it would have been good for us because we would have beat that version of this deck. But unfortunately, we actually lose to this version of the deck. Um, now, we did draw Iron Dragon, but I guess we go into this first before we go into the Iron Dragon. So we normal summon without tributing. We'll go, why not? We'll set, summon it here, see if he has a response. We do have the Iron Dragon. So we have to summon this afterwards, but it's fine because we have Cubic Ascension. There can only be one. We have stuff that we can do. Uh, we can just set the Cubic Ascension and then we'll trigger this in our hand to destroy a row of cards. I think I'm gonna go ahead and destroy this row with the Mirror Jade, because Mirror Jade is obviously a threat. This is the only normal special summon we're going to do. So we, de we definitely have to get rid of the Mirror Jade, because the Mirror Jade obviously threatens us a lot more than a lot of the other cards. So we definitely got to go with that. And Mirror Jade can't destroy Mateon. It can banish the Mateon, but it can't destroy the Mateon with the leaving the field effect, which is cool. And then he can also negate all our stuff with this trap card that he set here. But he's got Imperm. Imperm is, uh, is good. Solid. Yeah, he's got a lot. I don't I don't think we're going to be able to win this one. This one's kind of... And he negated... Well, I mean, this column doesn't matter. But this is... Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to win this one. Uh, we also have the Dragoodies, which I actually probably will use the Dragoodies. Uh, because Dragoodies will allow us to cut the Mirror Jade's attack, if anything, when we battle with Iron Dragon. So, yeah, let's go to Battle Phase and, and see what we can do here. Now, this card is dangerous back here. The one that negates all other card effects. Um, 
That card's really annoying. He's gonna tribute the Lubelion to pop the back row. I don't even know why, because I literally can't activate it. It's a face down card. Continue to main phase? No. I'm gonna give this other card a quick read right now, the brightest card. Um, yeah, we're in the battle phase. Let's see. I'm gonna attack with Mateon. Again, he can negate my monster effect anyway. So I think I'm gonna attack with... I mean, I can't, I'll take the damage. It's whatever. I'll take the damage. I have no choice. So he's gonna banish something with this. Again, he has this dude too back here. Uh, but if I go to damage step, he won't be able to use it. Um, he's gonna banish something. Yeah, the Mateon's gone. That's fine. I mean, we, we gotta do something here. I'm gonna attack with this. We'll see what he does. He can do this this card right here. And now, yeah, we're going to activate this at the start of damage step. And I don't think he can respond with this because it doesn't... This card in the background here is not a... Uh, it doesn't... It's not... It doesn't... It negates the effect, not the activation. So we're good. Uh, we're going to lose the Iron Dragon. That's whatever. And we... We, we kind of like tore his board apart to some degree, which is kind of nice. And now we just end phase here. And this will get destroyed because of the Mirror Jade. Uh, but we have Dragoodies, and we have a There Can Only Be One. There Can Only Be One is okay. Yeah, this There Can Only Be One is just okay, unfortunately. So he's going to banish the Special Summon. And if he needs to, he can, yeah, he can fuse. We, I still can't activate the There Can Only Be One, but he's going to be able to combo off a little bit here. Uh, but he's going to be able to fuse away our board. And I can, on his standby phase, lock him into... Whatever, it, it kind of sucks because it would have been awesome if he we, we he activated that and I locked him into Fallen of Albaz and he couldn't summon Lubelion or or Seer, yeah Lubelion the Searing Dragon. But now he's going to be able to do this entire combo on our turn, which kind of sucks for us. But I guess we just kind of have to live with it at this point. He's going to shuffle back those two and he's going to summon something, uh, probably another Mirror Jade or no Borlo Furious Dragon. And that's going to destroy two cards. And th that's essentially the game. So he played that out really smart. Very good player. Um, really cool. Uh, like I said, it was he, he wasn't degenerate at all. Um, just, just, um, he just better deck, better player. And he won that one. All right, we just won the coin flip. Always exciting. Let's see what we get. We get a hand that can't do anything at all. So <laughs> unfortunately, we did not draw a playable hand. I uh, We just set this, set the set the forbidden chalice and if we had a decent link to to go into like uh if we had an sp little knight we could probably do something but we don't have an sp little knight so if we had um sp little knight which obviously doesn't come out yet but let's say we had it uh, we can go into link spider and then special summon our other one and then go into like a cool link too but right now i don't think we have anything worth going into um so I guess we can go into this. Yeah, I think we just set this in defense mode because there's 18 defense and we just pass. I, there's nothing really else that we can do here. We have a very, very weak hand uh, to open with. Actually, I was dumb there. I should have just unbreakable spear. I should have just normal summoned one of the bigger guys and then just left it with the unbreakable spirit. All right, he activates this card, which we could actually use this card. I would love to pull this card. And then he's going to activate this to draw one. I don't know what our opponent's playing here, but that is is something else all right i'm totally cool with that i am totally cool with that he's gonna draw two turns every two cards every single draw phase uh this would be a great like i said this would be a fantastic card for us to pull i would love to draw that card um so from here i think we go into this i'm gonna go ahead and go into time thief you guys always tell me attack first then go into time I don't know how much defense this has, and I don't know what else he's playing. He could be, he's, this is a very weird card to start with. So he could be playing a very, very odd deck. So I want Time Thief in, in my, I want Time Thief in the rotation because he can dodge around weird stuff. So if our opponent has like Torrential on Summon or something like that, I want to be able to play around that. And that's why I'm not going into Battle Phase. I know, I know, because every single time people will tell me, because the, the, some of sometimes you guys will look at it from like the post perspective where you you see what the card at his face down is, and then you'll tell me, oh, you should have done this instead. Like if I attack right now, it's an Ash Blossom. I should have left those two level four monsters and done 1,200 damage. But if it's a 2,000 defense monster, you got you know it's, there's no way for me to know. Wow. Okay, I am definitely gonna absolutely not, absolutely not. I'm so lucky I have Forbidden Chalice. Absolutely not. No, I'm not trying to deal with morphing chart. Yeah, I am not. Wow, we got so lucky we had that as a that was a Pharaoh moment for sure. Glad those are back. 
<laughs> we're gonna go ahead and go to end phase. Uh, I think our opponent is playing Empty Jar. I think that's what he's playing. Which is fine, because we have one card in hand and he has three. Uh, that is something else. We had the perfect card to out his exact nonsense. And Time Thief is probably going to be decent, because his deck seems to be full of a ton of nonsense. This this is an interesting duel for sure. Oh, we got a spell card. Awesome, we get the draw. Yeah, he's got Book, Book of Tide. All right, so we're playing against Empty Jar. I don't know if we're going to be able to play to win against this. I guess we'll see. Cubic Ascension's useless right now. He can return a card in his graveyard on the top of the deck. That's fine. He can get that back next turn. It is kind of scary what he's got face down. He's going to go to end phase. I'm definitely going to activate the draw card with Time Thief. I have not played against uh, this deck in forever. So I'm going to detach that and... I mean, I don't have to detach anything else. I'll just detach that, draw a card. That's not bad at all. So we'll draw for turn. Small world isn't bad, but small world, like, what can we... I'm going to look into it, but we, we, if we can get something that can, like, get rid of face-down monsters before they're activated, like a, a destruction card, that would be awesome right now. So we're going to get a card on top of our deck. It's a, Oh, it's the Morphing Char he tried to recover. <laughs> that's fantastic. Oh, my God, that's so perfect. Uh, it's the exact card he tried to recover. He wasted a card to recover, and we just took it. All right, that's that's great. Uh, let me see if there's anything that we can search that could help our situation here. All right, so in all of my thinking, our opponent just kind of scooped it up. Um, yeah, that was crazy. Right after we took that that jar off the top of his deck, he, he didn't seem to be very comfortable sticking around, and he surrendered. Great for me. Um, yeah, Empty Jar, I haven't played that against that deck since, like, 2005. Uh crazy that 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 deck of all things is in platinum like that is <laughs> you, have, you have empty jar in platinum and then you have like a max rarity despia deck down in like bronze it, it it boggles my mind like how one deck is here like these rankings absolutely mean nothing until you get to like master and diamond all right so we got two legacy tickets for that let's go open a pack all right let's uh let's open this pack it doesn't seem to be glowing, but like literally whatever. I don't care. Like, there's so many rares. I, like another Vigion would be fantastic. We already got that Pilgrim Reaper. Uh, this we have never pulled. Um, this card isn't like unusable, but it requires three level four monsters. It's kind of a lot. Um, and it basically gains an additional effect if it has Mech Quipped um, Engineer as material, which is when it destroys, inflicts damage, we can inflict another thousand. I don't believe we have that card, but it's three level four monsters, which honestly is kind of a lot. Uh, it's a lot. You're asking for a lot there. Tie Dangle. I think we pulled one other Tie Dangle, but I'm going to be honest with you. I've never seen a Tie Dangle deck like past like gold. I, I don't think I've never seen it in any of the high rankings. So even if we pull a lot of it, I don't think it's going to be totally usable. Uh, this is a, a rank up card that works with Raid Raptors. So I don't know if that's going to be usable for us. Junk Box. Uh, do we have this card already? No, we don't. But it's a Morphtronic card. I don't think we have enough Morphtronics to really use. TG Cyber Magician is a TG card that I don't believe works with any of our cards. And then we've got, what is, oh, Numeria card. And Numeria just came out, uh, which is kind of cool. This card's actually kind of cool. It's really not a bad card. So if you just have a face-up pendulum monster in your extra mon in, in your extra deck, you can special summon this card from your hand. Honestly, not a bad effect. One million percent going in our pendulum pile deck that we have building in the background of all of this. Um, and then as an extra effect, if we have a uh, Nem Nemlaria Dream, no, not that one. I'm sorry, Nemlaria, the Dreaming no uh, Nemlaria. Um, so if we have that card in our face up, face up in our extra deck, we can banish a face down extra deck card, and then this card guy gains basically a bunch of attack for every monster our opponent controls. Um, that effect isn't bad. Again, this goes into our pendulum pile deck that we have in the background. Let's see what the super rare card is: anti spell fragrance. <laughs> That's such an amazing card. Wow. That's like outrageously good, but the problem is once again that kind of makes our deck more of a going first only deck. And it's this isn't bad. This is a fan, phenomenal, fantastic card. This will probably make people make people auto scoop, which is kind of cool. Because again, we're at the stage right now where we just need to keep winning, so we can keep pulling cards to kind of solidify the strategies that we have going here. And this is exactly the kind of thing that we need because it's one of those like rage quit cards where it'll make our opponent like I don't, I don't want to, I don't even want to be here anymore. So this is probably like a perfect card for us to pull. Uh, because now we have barrier statue and we have anti. We have pulled so many floodgates. Like, I, I'm not 
you know, I, I typically don't even play Floodgate decks. I play more of like a uh, like a going second style of, of gameplay. So to get all these Floodgates is like completely against who I am as a person. But I guess we, we, we got it. All right, let's get these legacy tickets out. Let's see what we pull out of here. Sometimes I kinda just want to skip these legacy tickets because it's like it's all of this animation just for two little cards. Uh, zero force. Uh, this actually isn't that bad. Uh, but I don't know that we have a way to do like prompt this. So activate when a face-up monster you control is removed from play. All face-up monsters on the field become zero, and that's permanently zero. That's actually kind of cool, but it's kind of slow because it's on a trap card. It has to be one of our monsters, so we have to like banish one of our monsters. It's a little slow, but it's not a, not an. It's a, it's a decent card. This isn't very good. We've already pulled this in the past, so there's no need to like break that down all over again. Uh, that didn't have any shiny cards in it whatsoever, despite glowing. Uh, Photon Wyvern is not a bad card, because if this card is normal, flip summon, destroy all set cards your opponent controls. But this thing is level 7, so normal summoning a level 7 monster is kind of a lot. Flip summoning a level 7 monster is even more, so I don't know if that's going to work for us. And then we've got Ganbara Lancer. Okay, so this lets you special summon another one of itself if you normal summon it. And it's level 5 with 1,000 attack. Come on, man. Who are you kidding? All right, so now we're in the deck building section. I'm not going to lie to you. I have no idea what to put in. I have no idea. I, I kind of want to take out the Parallel Twister, but this thing does put in work like sometimes. Um, we can always remove the Paladin Tar... Because like, we haven't technically gotten it. But we've been kind of getting unlucky with this whole Paladin engine. But I'm kind of hopeful about this Paladin engine, if I'm going to be honest with you. I definitely want to add Anti-Spell. I didn't even know this was at 2. Like, look at all these. We have a limited card, a semi-limited, and we have another limited card in a Masochist deck. Like, it's... On, this is a scary pull. This is... It really is. This is, like, an outrageously good pull. Um, now, I do, I'm not going to lie, kind of want to pull get rid of the Parallel Twister. But this is, like, our only Spell and Trap card removal in the entire deck. It's also our only way to get rid of our own Synchro Zone. Um, and if I take out the Paladin of Storm Dragons, then I also have to remove the High Ritual because it does nothing. So now I have to remove multiple cards. i got to think twice. Literally. So I, I, I got to consider here what to take out. I also am thinking about, I want to kind of take out Book of Lunar Eclipse, but at the same time, it's like, it's uh, it's kind of good. All right, so this is what I've decided to go with, right? So I'm going to actually remove the Paladin of Storm Dragons. I know we just put it in there, but again, we put things in, we take things out, you know, it's it, that's what it's all about. So let's, we'll remove that. We'll remove the High Ritual Art, because uh, technically it is somewhat bricky. Um, and then we'll put in the this ledger book. People have been begging me to play this ledger book. I'll do it. I'll, I'll play the ledger book. It's kind of cool. Uh, so basically, what it does is lets you target up to two monsters. Your opponent controls, banish them, and then your you get your opponent gets them back at the end phase, and uh, your opponent gains one thousand uh, life points for every monster that left the field. So it's a good card. Um, my only issue with it before is that they get the monster back and they gain life points, but it is technically good with the barrier statue because. Um, next turn we could just draw like let's say they normal summon something and we activate this banish their monster or they get it back during the end phase um, and we save our ba uh, our barrier statue next turn we can summon like I don't know like battle ox and attack over whatever they were going to attack our barrier statue with so in that way it's fairly good and it's an interruption it can get rid of up to two monsters it can be somewhat cool so maybe I'm taking out cards that are a little more bricky and replacing them with cards that are slightly less bricky um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that I also kind of want to bring back that other dude, the one that works with trap cards. Uh, he seemed like a cool card. We did. He's our only like real draw power that we have in the deck. So I kind of want to bring that dude back. He, he kind of put in work a couple of times. But right now, this whole normal engine has been just doing it. This this normal engine has been making things happen. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna save the deck and I'm gonna go see how well I do. All right, we just won the coin flip. Our hand is. I mean, it's 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 solid. I can't. It, it, we have Time Thief Redo ready to go, and we have Cubic and Shrink. Like, it's a solid hand. Like, I can't even complain. Uh, we'll set this. We have Penguin Squire, which has been absolutely, like, killing it for us right now. Uh, summon that out in defense just in case he somehow, like, affect Veilers us or something. Lower its level by one. Activate. Flip our monster. Yeah, Penguin Squire's been, like, unreal. I'd love to pull another one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's been just unreal. And we also obviously have the options here. We actually were kind of dumb with that. We could have gone... We could have had this dude on the board if we wanted him to be on the board right now. Uh, because I just realized we could have gone into Link Spider 
afterwards and done some stuff. But I mean, it's we could have gone into a synchro essentially. Uh, but I don't think that, yeah, that wouldn't have helped anyway. That's not bad. So um, we could go into this, but I don't think it helps right now. So I just go into Time Thief because, like I said, nine times, literally nine times out of ten, Time Thief is the best X Seed summon that we have available because we don't have like Abyss Dweller or anything like that. So most of the time, this is going to be your Baguska. Even if, even if I had Baguska in Abyss Dweller, I think I'd still go into Time Thief. He's just such a cool card uh, because he like uses. We gain information on our opponent's deck. Uh, it's such a it's such a I don't know like a. I don't, I don't know what they really call it. It's such a cool process to, to use this card because you like gain insight immediately into what our opponent. So we got a monster and they're playing automatically. We know they're playing Cyber Darks. Uh, this is a little bit of a problem is if they summon that monster, we have no interruptions. That's that's our big problem because um, if they summon the monsters unaffected by everything, we pretty much pretty much have lost this because we have Shrink, which cuts attack. And we have this, which redirects an attack. And then we have this, which banishes itself. So we have cards that don't really... Don't really help this particular situation right now. How good would Anti-Spell Fragrance have been right now? Anti-Spell Fragrance would have been absolutely disgusting right now. He would have had Nova, Normal Summon, and that's it. Pass. Literally, pass. That's all. He would have passed, set a bunch, pass. That's all he could have done right now. It would have been absolutely disgusting. That, that is an insane pull. Our opponent's been comboing off for like what feels like an hour. Now he just uh, got, went into this Darkness Dragon, the big one. And um, he used Power Bond, obviously, to make it. He comboed off for like two hours. And now he's got an 8,000 attack monster on board, uh, which he can tribute to summon. Okay, he's going to go straight to battle phase. I don't believe that this is actually unaffected by any anything. Um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna try to bait this um, if we can. Yeah, you can make a monster gain, I believe, 2100 or something like that. Yeah, you can do that. Um, we're gonna try to bait some stuff here because we need to make things happen. Um, we're gonna activate. He negates and destroys, right? This dude. Yeah, so we're gonna try to activate this, the shrink, to get rid of the this darkness's attack. So we're gonna try to do that first. He's not going to go for it, uh, which sucks for us. We're going to go to activate the effect of Time Thief to try to get it off the board if we can, because this can only, I believe this can only attack a monster. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to cut attack and we're going to banish, we're going to banish our monster and uh, shrink his monster. Oh, te oh, that sucks. <laughs> and this guy can't do any damage directly. We're going to go ahead and Vigom now. Hopefully he doesn't negate this but if he does we essentially lose i try to bait it out to the best of my abilities but obviously he didn't go for it he was inviting yep he's going to negate that and that's pretty much the game if he negates that and our life points are um well it's not the game because he sent the guy to the graveyard that's fine all right that's perfect then so he's going to do that we're going to take three thousand. that's fine okay 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 that's fine and now he doesn't have the equip so i think i don't think he can summon the monsters unaffected by everything perfect um so now we activate this bring him back and hopefully we get a trap card I uh, could do this, but right now that just doesn't really help us. And he takes 2,000. Okay, lots of things went... F oh, I just realized the Vijam now. I can't do that. Okay, um, that wasn't the worst thing that could have happened. Because now he just has this thing. We got a spell card, Forbidden Droplets. Uh, let me read what this dude does fully. All right, so he's four, He's just 4,000, and that's about it. So we're going to activate. We're going to detach the draw card. Hopefully we draw some other battle ox. Mm, Arabellum battle ox. We don't have bad stuff. We have Link Spider, but the problem is I think our other card requires two effect monsters. So that doesn't really help us right now. This dude requires two effect monsters. We only have one Link Spider at this point. Yeah, we only have two. Yeah, have one Link Spider at this point. So that doesn't really help. If we had one more Earth monster, that would be sick. But right now we don't have enough stuff to really do anything. Also, this this thing can actually beef up its own attacks. The um, the Cyber Dragon Zeger, because he has a quick effect um, during each battle phase, including our battle phase, kind of sucks for us. So these monsters aren't really doing anything for us. We didn't draw any of our really good back row. Link Spider's not really doing anything for us either. I think we just set a monster and pass here, because again, like I've said, we 
We can't really go into anything right now. If we had like a nightmare nightmare of some kind, we could possibly link climb. But right now, I'm not seeing any play lines that would put us anywhere that we need to go. We can't get to this dude either. This would be cool. Invalid dude, but I don't think we'd do anything here. Yeah, he can beef himself up and we just lose if we do that. So I think we just set a monster in defense and pass here. And then we'll change him to defense because, again, we can't really out anything right now. Obviously, we have to go to defense because we're not trying to... Trying to take too much damage, but we do have Vidjam in play, so that's cool. We'll see what we get. We got a spell card. So we get the draw, but we don't get to save Time Thief or Edoer anymore. So if he attacks it, we essentially sort of lose here. Um, I'm probably just going to attack, uh, activate this now so the game stops bothering me. Because if I'm going to be honest with you, there's no better time or worse time to detach this to draw a card. That would have been good. That would have been good to draw last turn. He's playing that card, which is in the structure deck, but no one really plays this. The Cyber Dark Invasion. All right, he's going to go to Verde. You never want to see Verde Anaconda. We'll see what that gets us to. It's probably going to go to the attacking multiple times a battle phase, man. I'm actually going to read this real quick, see what this does. All right, he's going to go into Rampage, which can attack multiple times, and he's going to send stuff. This is not looking good for us whatsoever right now. He has multiple attacks with this. He has the Negate with this if he can get the Trap card to attach something back onto it. Verde Anaconda is just kind of sitting there, but, you know, he's sitting there proudly. So he's going to get over this. He's going to be able to attack again. Um, and he's going to attack again. And now Vijam is... Whoa, what happened? Whoa, what happened? Did I forget? Did I do the turn off chaining or something? Maybe our life points weren't low enough. That's what it probably was. That sucks. I guess we lost that one. I mean, we're going to lose that one most likely anyway. Got to get to the next game. All right, we just lost a coin flip. Uh, just as a reminder to myself, I need to stop playing at night because there's like every single Japanese and Korean and Chinese player is online at night. And we get either fully constructed meta decks or self dk so it, it, it's, it's a little bit of a weird experience so if you notice earlier in the episode i was actually playing during the day and we got like a mix of cool different stuff now i'm playing at night and it's virtually all all um what are they called it's, it's virtually all like meta decks not like super duper meta decks but meta decks to some degree he's gonna go into zoa honestly none of what he's playing right now really hurts our deck and if I'm going to be honest with you, Mateon is really good against his deck. So, I, I it doesn't really matter. We're, I think we're going to be able to summon this Mateon. And he has Dogmatic Punishment, but Dogmatic Punishment does zero against uh, Mateon. So, we're going to send from our extra deck. Yeah, we're going to send from our extra deck. We're not trying to send from our hand. There's nothing that really benefits. I mean, we just have cards we're not going to go into more than likely. So, we're going to send this. We're going to send this because we never go into it anyway. So we're probably not going to go into those. We're probably not going to go into these. I have to send seven. Seven is kind of a lot. A little unfair if, if you ask me. And we're going to send this. And we'll send the Wee Witch. So those we probably are not going to go into. So I'll just send those. Confuse our opponent. Our opponent's looking at our grave. You're like, what am I playing against? If you look at this, honestly, it kind of looks like a Cybers deck. It kind of looks like we're playing math mech if i'm being honest with you if you look at the cards in our graveyard right now they're like oh this is a math mech player a bad one but it's a math mech player now how cool would it have been if he activated this effect and we just had a bunch of like garura and uh natis and like stuff like that in our extra deck now he's gonna maximus so we have to send two more from our extra deck he's gonna evaporate our extra deck but as long as we have time thief in there i think we're I think we're good as long as we have Time Thief. Uh, who else do we not go into? Let me see my hand again. Yeah, who else do we not go into? I'm probably not going to go into this dude. I'm probably not going to go into this dude. So, honestly, I'm actually more likely to go into him than the, uh, the Synchros, which I never get to somehow. I'll probably just go with those two. All right, so that's our opponent's end board. Um, more than likely... This face down card is Dogmatic and Punishment. Um, and now he's going to summon another monster, which is going to be the Fusion. Oof, that kind of hurts. And he's going to go into Titan Clad. He's going to, oh, this thing. Ugh, that sucks. That thing negates non targeting. Forgot all about that. So that is probably going to be the end of us. Um, yeah, I think we just, we only have one play. <laughs> so that's the good thing about changing our deck to normal monsters. Like, yeah, to some degree it sucks, but. Um, to another degree, like, our play lines are crispy clear. Like, there's not a lot I can do. 
I can normal summon and go for, uh, you know, I can, I can, they, they, they you know, they, they normal summon and do stuff, basically. He's going to try to fuse before we go to the battle phase, which makes sense, you know, it's going to only fuse in the main phase. All right, he's going to fuse into the Grand Soil Dragon. Um, that's going to let him send. I don't know what he's going to send, but like I said, he has, he has the Fleur, and he's going to be able to bounce with that. Yeah, this, this duel is pretty much, that's, there's not, there's not much I can do here. Um. That one's wrapped up. Like I said, playing at night is, is a weird experience. You get either like like really, really good, competent players. Like that guy was a good dogmatical player. He knew what he was doing. He wasn't just playing. Those are solid plays. You either get like good, competent players that are playing, even if they're playing like rogue decks or like, I wouldn't say, yeah, dogmatic is probably like a tier three, maybe rogue deck, but they're like competent players. Like that that other player that we had earlier, the, uh, the branded player was like a very good competent player you get competent players doesn't, doesn't matter what the deck is or you get like absolute like self dk so i think i'm going to start playing during the day more often all right we just won the coin flip here our hand is oof, it's okay we've got the adam Anipa adam emancipator analyzer forbidden chalice for a negate and then we've got the Pophis. it's whatever it's not the best hand i'm not gonna lie so i'm just gonna normal summon that Forbidden Chalice face down. Actually, I'm going to activate this. Maybe bait into gate. They've had Gamma all day, so I probably shouldn't have done that. But whatever. It, it, it's better to bait and effect Valor now than, than later. Obviously, none of this can be used here. If we had some rocks, man. that would, We actually have that other Ad Emancipator card, too. Uh, now we just set this and this and the Apophis. And we pass. And we hopefully, hopefully we get something good out of this. Our opponent set two cards and normal summon a Magician's Rod. I honestly think that Forbidden Chalice is probably the best card in this situation. I don't want him to get to the... That's his first play. I don't want him to get to the Magician's Package right now. So I'm going to go ahead and Forbidden Chalice. Um, and I do have the Shrink to, to out the fact that I used a uh, Forbidden Chalice here. Yeah, if he set first and did all that, I think it's probably best to do this because he hasn't gotten to Souls yet. He hasn't gotten to Soul Servant yet. We just, you got to keep Dark Magician off this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the Shrink, Shrink his monster. And now he's at 12 after all of that confusing math. So his monster gets destroyed, which is good. So now he's off that thing and it didn't search. And our card advantage is down, right? Our card advantage is down, but it's definitely not the end of the world. And he doesn't have the really good cards in play. Dragoodies isn't a bad draw. Uh, Dragoodies is not a bad draw. So we can go into Time Thief and I save the Dragoodies for later because it's not really doing anything. So we're going to go ahead and summon that out. We could technically go to Battle Phase first. I don't know what he has face down. I imagine... I don't, I don't know. Dragoodies we probably just normal summon and just attack with. I think we just go for the attack first because I... There's always the chance that he has Eternal Soul face down, and during the battle phase, he blocks all of our attacks. And that sucks, but it, I think it's there's worse situations that we can be in. So let's let's activate this, maybe bait something out. Hopefully he has like an effect Valor or something. Ma <laughs> Maxi. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Maxi is an interesting card to, to see there, I'm not going to lie. It, it, it baited something. I mean, I, let's, let's agree to that. Um, yeah, now we go to battle phase, and hopefully we can get a, a ton of damage in here blazing mirror force this is why i always make the this is what happens see i listen to you guys you guys always attack first attack first then summon well i did it and look what happened i mean that's not your fault it's not your fault it's not my fault who the hell would have known who would have known all right um next turn we have access to we don't have a trap card yes we gotta hope we draw a trap card that's our best bet this is a level four yeah i guess we have to draw this and hope we draw a draw uh we have to add this and hope we draw a trap card that sucks i should have made the time thief redoer first but again i was just i listened to you guys you guys are always make attack first then make the monster all right he, he at least just set a monster please draw a trap card please draw a trap card we need him to draw a trap. Trap, trap, trap. Ugh, we drew the brick. Not the trap card. We drew a brick. Now, let me read these. Maybe they special summon themselves for some reason. Ugh, yeah, this sucks. I'm just going to... I'm probably just going to set one in defense mode and just pass here. Because honestly... Um, I'm going to act... Whatever monster this is that he has face down sucks. So I'm going to use the... Activate this card to put this back on top of his deck. Because we want to keep him drawing whatever sucks... Whatever terrible card that is. We want him to draw it again. Because it obviously did nothing for him. And uh, 
we definitely want him to get back in the loop. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, we want him to draw it and play it again because we want another chance. We want Essentially, we want minus one to hopefully draw a monster this time. All right, let's see. Book of... Oh my God, that sucks. All right, so now we just pass. Nothing we can do there. Nothing we can do. Book of Lunar Eclipse is not the card to draw in that situation. We can't even... We literally can't use it in any way. We can't discard it. We can't do anything with it. So it's just kind of a dead card. Right, he went to end phase again. He's still in Brick City right now. Cubic Ascension. Doesn't help us at the moment, but you know what? It's better than what we had before. So we'll, we'll, we'll sit on the Cubic Ascension. That really sucks though. Um, I really should have made Time Thief and then attack. But I mean, what can you do? Harpies Feather Dust. They're fantastic. There goes our Vijam Rip. But I mean, I guess we can float into it later. So he's still, he's still on absolutely nothing. There's nothing going on on his side. Faustian Bargain. Bro, what is going on with us today? <laughs> right now we're both just just totally bricked up right now we have nothing going on uh this has been we're we're we're, we're this is like brick city all around oh my god perfect he's gonna activate hand destruction uh so he's gonna go minus one for us to draw he had slifer the sky dragon and but you, ah, that's not good to see so now we're gonna discard two obviously I, I love how the game makes you do all of this like dumb stuff it's not bad it's not bad at all okay we have some we have some we have some decent stuff now but the problem is now he has decent stuff plus he put the uh, soul servant in the graveyard the magician girls Ugh, yuck all right so okay so here's what's good here's what's really good um we have an out to the this card's really annoying but we have an out to it fantastic so we have iron dragon uh this when it's targeted can summon a magician girl from the deck not good but we drew iron dragon so we're good so we're gonna set this activate iron dragon special it right here pop everything in this column so we don't have to worry about that anymore um probably flip this go into i mean i i <laughs> we probably just go into the time thief before things get real bad and real dicey because he can dodge stuff so we'll go into him and we have Giga, Giga, go, go. We have this guy in hand, the Giga. Uh, I think we just normal summon that. Whatever this has been has been stuck in a loop in his hand. So just go to battle phase and attack over it. I don't know what it is, but this time if he has Mirror Force, we have oof, 2,000 defense. Come on. Who would have thought that was face down? That sucks. All right, now we just end phase, but now we've got Time Thief in the loop. With time Thief in the loop, anything's possible. All right, time, uh, let's get our card. Hopefully, it's not a monster. I'm going to go ahead and take something. It's a monster. It's an Obelisk, the Tormentor. We're, we're, we're like playing Yugi right now. There's been too much going on. He's got his graveyards loaded, though. I'm not going to lie. His, he's, he's got... Poof! See it, chump? Yugi's gone. Wow. That was, a, that was an incredible game. I want to go see this guy's deck. That was incredible. All right, so we got one Legacy ticket and... Wow, we got like Blastoise. All right, so this is what our opponent's playing. I don't know what's going on here. He's got the God Car. He's got a you. He got essentially Yugi's deck right now. This is like, this is like my like my grandpa's deck has no pathetic cards. This is this is the the exact deck. This is kind of crazy. All right, let's open the Legacy uh, the Master Pack first. This is going to be the last Master Pack of the episode, more than likely, because. Um, it's been it's been a lot of recording. I did two recording sessions for this one, so I did one during the day and during the night just to see what was going on. Uh, we've got a Magistus, which is cool. It's a level four Magistus, which we might end up heading in this direction. We pulled a lot of spellcaster support, so we we will see where that goes. We we pulled that Tri Magistus card. We pulled this now. Uh, we pulled that those cards that say when you control a spellcaster, special summon yourself. Like cool stuff. So we might we might see what we can do with that. Um, this effect's not bad either. Destroy a spell, um, and then draw a card, place one spell, place one card from your hand to the bottom of the deck. That, card, that effect's not bad either, so overall this card's actually not too bad. I might actually, and it's, it doesn't say new right here, which means we actually have multiple copies of it, which is kind of cool. So that means we have another one already. Nice to see. Uh, and then we've got the Paleozoic Eldonia. Uh, crazy name. Basically it makes a monster gain 500 attack, and then it works like the... I guess it could be good with our barrier statue. The problem is they'd have to summon something that's like 1400 or less for it to matter. Um, it's not bad. And then, of course, it, it's a Paleozoic, so it special summons itself, and then we can go into rank two plays. But for the most part, I cut most of that stuff out. Uh, Shadal, Zephronga, 
this card isn't bad, so it's another pendulum scale that we have available to us, I guess. Goes in our pendulum. It has nice, nice scale. One, one scale is pretty cool. Dragon Maid, welcome. I don't think I'm going to be able to pull all of the Dragon Maid cards. There's just far too many, uh, and it's too high rarity. Uh, here's a super rare. We've got Red Rain. If we control a level eight or higher synchro monster, banish all monsters on the field except that monster with the highest level. Uh, all of the remaining monsters are unaffected by card effects. All right, so this card overall is actually like a good card, but we just don't go into level eight or higher synchro monsters typically. Uh, we do have a level eight or higher synchro monster, but we only have one. Now we have two tuners technically, and we couldn't make this, but the problem is we have to make this going second, and now we have a trap card. Like, there's too much going on. We don't consistently make that monster, so I'm not going to play a brick for a monster that we don't consistently summon. Um, next, we've got what? Justment. What adjustment? Uh, which is an equip for Watts. Um, it gains, they gain 800 attack. Its effects are negated. Each time it inflicts battle damage your to your opponent, draw one card. We have a lot of Watts, but I mean, come on. Come on, guys. Uh, another Bujin monster. I might have to look into... I'm not going to lie to you. I've never played Bujins. Um, and the problem is we don't have the Exceed monsters of any of them. But we have been pulling a lot of Bujins. But Bujins are a level 4 deck, so we might just be able to get to time thief with them like it, they might be the better engine than the engine we're playing now and then we've got a second copy of the scorching sunburner which is cool because again if we ever make that fire deck if we ever go in that direction uh that is a cool card to pull all right let's open the last and final pack of the episode which is this legacy ticket uh let's see what we get out of it Hopefully we get something usable or somewhat cool. Cyber Gymnast is discard a card, target one attack position, monster your opponent controls, destroy that target. This isn't bad at all. This is a solid card. Once per turn, discard a card, target one attack position, monster your opponent controls, destroy that target. Wow. That's just a that's just a solid, it's like nightmare, nightmare, nightmare cyber gymnast. <laughs> it, that's not a bad card. Like I can't even complain. Like again, this is one of those cards. It's not bad. But I don't know if we have the space in our deck to play it. Like right now, we have this normal monster synergy, and it's like actually working out for us. Like we're we're actually winning. We have a solid win. It's about it's probably about I don't know what the win rate was this episode, but I felt like I've been winning a lot more than I than I did last episode, and that's for sure. Uh, so I kind of don't really need this at the moment. If I ever go back to like a ton of effect monsters, I might play that. But it's really not a bad card. Then we've got an artifact. We all know what these do. Let's just see what this payoff is. All right, so basically what this card does is if it's destroyed uh, during our opponent's turn, we can special summon it and uh, then special set another artifact monster in the spawn trap card zone. So this is only useful if you have other artifacts already in play. So honestly, we'd need other artifacts. We need artifact ignition and essentially we'd need an entire artifact deck to make this usable and artifacts pure are really not that great of an archetype. Pure. Um, honestly, they, they're just not fantastic but cyber gymnast is actually like shockingly kind of decent so um not a bad card all right so we're at the end of on the the end of the episode now i'm not gonna lie to you our pulls have been kind of crazy uh, not super crazy this episode but in general i actually really kind of like the direction of this deck that we have i really do we have like a time thief redoer turbo slash barrier statue deck um, that also has a really good core of spawn trap cards and our extra deck can, can definitely get better. But overall, the deck is the best easily that it's ever been uh, since the beginning of the show. And going first, like we have a really solid chance against a lot of decks. I mean, we now have Banty Spell and there can only be one, two barrier statues, Crackdown, Synchro Zone, all of these interruptions. We have things like Forbidden Chalice, like... Um, time thief like this this deck has actually gotten to be a fairly good deck and then going second we also have a ton of really cool options that have, have just been really good we have going second options going first options sometimes the only issue we have is that uh sometimes they conflict where we draw going second options going first or going first options going second but overall like the deck is honestly kind of good um very positive end of the episode if there's anything you want me to change i definitely think there's a lot of directions we could go. I really kind of like that ritual monster, even though we did brick on it. And just because we bricked on it doesn't mean we'll brick on it every single time. But I actually thought that ritual monster was actually uh, kind of a cool card to play. Uh, but overall, thank you for watching and have a great day.
la 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 la